What's up guys? It's your boy on the sensei. Welcome, guys, to what if a sociopath was reborn as Inuzuka becoming immortal in Naruto. Part 3. If you enjoy my content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share, and leave a comment. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Yami Piav. I am currently in my office with my eyes closed. Look through the eyes of one of the bugs and see Shiro Manhandle Team 7. He isn't my dog for nothing. He has learned from me on how to make people listen to you and how leadership works. Of course, I know that Shiro is known as the best informant in Kanoha. But actually it's just him borrowing my spy network. Nothing in Kanoha is out of my control, but I can't be publicly known as having my personal spy network. After all, at the end of the day the Hokage is a leader first and ninja second. A leader must seem like he can do no wrong. Just like in my first world, the president wasn't the leader of the spy network or that would put people on edge. So he has an organization that does it for him, well more like a scapegoat. But truly though, their current D-rank mission is to find a lost dog, and Kanoha has grown huge under my rule. Even for a ninja that would take days to find an animal in Kanoha. So they did the smart thing and went to ask Shiro. Now do I know where the lost dog for an irrelevant deer rank mission is that would be a waste of time to know something like that, and I do know where the dog is. Who knows, that dog could be an unstable factor, or a white zetsu disguised as a dog. Of course that isn't the truth due to the mosquitoes already having a blood sample from the dog. So I truly do control everything in Kanoha. Even about the hiding criminal organizations. It takes 4 hours for Team 7 to complete the mission, and Shiro traumatized the kids. But still, as they are walking towards the Hokage Tower. I act like I am working and have a huge pile of paperwork beside my desk. Also the bridge builder is here currently, but obviously Naruto doesn't talk to me like he would talk to the third Hokage, acting so disrespectful against me is a big no, no. Really though, the third Hokage really tries to stop my growing power. Sheesh, can't that old guy just chill? He acts like a cucked husband stalking his wife's boyfriend. But really, though, his organization is a joke. I control 70% of the members from the inside, Hiruzen is weak, he can't just kill the members who refuse him. So he listens to their reasons and such, and that is why he will never really be a nail in my way. I mean his organization is helping me figure out who the people who don't like me are, and who should accidentally die in a mission. I really have no enemies or rivals. No one can threaten me, Kagaya could escape from the moon right now, and I still wouldn't say that she is a threat to my life. True, she is dangerous, but the only thing she has is raw power. She can't use something like the reaper's death seal on me, and I can't really be killed by raw power. You can obliterate my physical body, but I would just reform it into a new one around my soul. My power is immeasurable, but I want more. I am nowhere near omnipotent or omnipresent. I can destroy the world with just a thought, and then remake it with another thought. I have even started caring about my children in this world. Why? Because I know that even if they decide to betray me I can easily get rid of them. With a swipe of my hand I could splatter their brains. But I wouldn't do that for nothing, they are after all my kids. I even think about Hachi sometimes, I couldn't be a father to him. His life was truly tragic if you look at it from his perspective. It's sad that he had to go and die, but I still don't let my guard down, but I have recognized the true fact that none of my children will ever reach even 5% of my power. As I am thinking this, I hear the door open and Team 7 come in. I of course act like I am working, this is the ultimate technique for someone like me, who lets my clones do all the work well now technically I am working Hokage Sama calls out Kakashi, taking me out of my thought process. I just look at him in the eyes and nod. It seems like another successful D-rank mission for Team 7. I say that with a teasing tone. Pising off Naruto and his teammates, but they didn't say anything. I smile at that. Anyway, Kakashi, so you think that your genin are ready for C-rank missions? After all, they did just complete the mandatory amount of D-ranks needed before taking a C-rank. Kakashi catches on my hidden message and decides to tease his students too by saying. Hm I do wonder about that. They sometimes can be quite annoying. As he says that he looks at Naruto, meaning that even though he said they he actually meant that Naruto was annoying. On the other hand Naruto just clasped his hands together saying. Kakashi-sensei. I promise I will be good from now on. Just please don't let us take another D-rank. I mean if I have to talk to Shiro one more time as he thinks that, Naruto's face becomes green as if he is about to throw up. Hope he doesn't actually throw up in my office. That would be gross. In the end Kakashi seems to come to a decision and says. Okay, okay, I guess that they can be considered to be ready for a C-rank mission. I just nod. Okay then, I want you to meet a quick check on my memories about the name of the person. Tazuna the bridge builder. You will escort him to the land of waves. Tazuna, unlike Ganon, he doesn't come in here drunk but more orderly and looks at me and nods. 
I nod back and give Kakashi a look, he nods too, understanding my hidden message. After some goodbyes, they go away and I am left back to my thoughts. This will be quite a bit of emotional development for Naruto and the others. It will help them grow into useful tools for me. Now I have free time again. I wonder if that intern of ours is single. Who am I joking, I don't care even if she is dating someone and is 16 years younger than me. Yami is 37 years old, I look through my memories and look through her life story oh wait, she actually used to be in the Inuzuka orphanage. Well that just makes things easier on how to manipulate her. Yurichi Piav. You know watching dad flirting with a girl around my age is extremely awkward. I can see him smile at her and give her compliments. That is when he looks at me, since I am transformed into a black cat and have even hidden my chakra, it would be hard for even S rank sensor ninja to notice me. But this is dad, so he immediately notices me and waves. Shit nothing really escapes him does it as Naruto and the rest of Team 7, together with the bridge builder go outside of the village. They are all just walking at normal speed, with no one talking about anything. Well at least it is until Naruto couldn't help it anymore and asked. Hey Tezuna, how is it in the land of waves anyway? Tezuna just takes a flask from his jacket and takes a sip. Well it is different from Konoha, that is for sure. Whoa. Really? Then why didn't your ninja come and escort you too? Curiously asks Naruto. At this time, the bridge builder doesn't need to say anything as Sakura intervenes by saying. Actually the land of waves doesn't have neither a ninja village or a cage. Its natural sea defense has made the land of waves not need them. This time even Kakashi has a little to input. Yes, you are right Sakura, but due to those natural defenses, they sometimes become a double-edged sword. For example, there is not a lot of trade going in that place, after all most ships will wreck themselves, and there is not any tourism due to the same reason. As they make some more small talk, Naruto asks again. So you don't have a leader, like a cage. The leader of a land isn't a hokage, Naruto. Says Kakashi. But Naruto is confused by this. But doesn't Uncle Yami lead the land of fire? Kakashi simply answers. No, the daimyo leads the land of fire. But even as he says that, Kakashi can't help but think inside his head. At least on the surface. Every jonin worth its rank knows who really rules the land of fire behind the scenes. Yami does, it's almost common knowledge. Sasuke when he hears Naruto ask these questions he looks at him with a calm mocking gaze. Didn't you pay attention in the academy Naruto? This is some basic stuff that any six-year-old knows. Says Sasuke as he looks at Naruto. Hey. Don't look at me with those annoying eyes team. Says Naruto as he points toward Sasuke. Who just turns his head the other way, completely ignoring Naruto. But in the end everyone is looking at Naruto, even Kakashi wonders how Naruto passed the academy like this. I guess having someone like Naruto with such monstrous chakra reserves get stuck another year, would be such a waste of potential, or maybe Aruka really was being biased when he let Naruto pass. Well I guess this is more work for me then. Teaching him some basic stuff. As Kakashi contemplates that he sees a puddle of water at the side of the road. Amateurs, on a clear day like this, they make a puddle of water as their hiding spot. They are definitely from the hidden mist, most likely Chunin, but with their intelligence, I bet that a genin could beat them. Still he doesn't do anything and just keeps reading his book as they pass the puddle. Suddenly out of the puddle the demon brothers come out and spike chains come out of their giant gauntlets, surrounding Kakashi. Who acts like a little panicked, but he is already out of there and is substituted towards a tree. Kakashi looks at the battle going on below and seeing that their target is the bridge builder. He can't help but sigh a little, the Hokage signaled him to expect the mission to be above C rank, and that the bridge builder is lying about the mission. As Kakashi sees that the battle is in its climax rush, he appears behind the brothers and bomb holds them in place by a chokehold. Completely immobilizing them. Kakashi just looks at his students with an eye smile while casually saying. Yo. A little while later, he has gotten all of the information he needs and tied the demon brothers to a tree. Now this is just a show to his students, but in actuality he already killed them. Kanoha wouldn't waste their time on useless prisoners like them, and Kakashi knows that he should just kill them. But he did summon his dog and sent it towards Kanoha with a message. He then looks towards the bridge builder and says. Well now wasn't that interesting, it seems like Tazuna you are the target. Could you explain that to me? Though Kakashi said that like a question, the look on his eye made it clear that Tazuna should talk or else so Tazuna immediately spilled the beans about Gato, the land of waves and all that. Who is Gato? Asks Naruto, perplexed by this. And this time it wasn't a dumb question either, due to both Sakura and Sok not knowing about it. Kakashi just sighs at this. Well Gato is the second richest man in the world. With a shipping empire that is moderately successful. But he is mostly overlooked due to the richest man in the world taking all of the spotlight. Who is the richest man in the world? We never learned about that in the academy. Asks Sakura, but Tazuna is the one to answer by saying. Well that title would belong to your Hokage, Yami Inuzuka, he has been considered the richest man in the world for almost two decades now. Earning the title at the age of 20. 
The genins are surprised at this. But Kakashi adds some input by saying. Yep, that is the truth. Yami and Yuzuga was already Kanoha's hero and showed excellence before he even became Hokage. He didn't get famous by becoming Hokage, he became Hokage because he was famous and loved amongst the people. Naruto seems gobsmacked by that. I have to be like that to become Hokage Kakashi just nods at this. You hit, you need to be at his level at least. He is considered the best Hokage since the founding of Kanoha. It can be said that Kanoha is the greatest hidden village because of the fifth Hokage. Naruto clenched his hand forming it into a fist, while resolutely saying. I will be the best Hokage, surpassing even Yami. Kakashi sees this and his eyes widened. Ah Naruto, if you clench your fist like that the poison might spread faster. Immediately Naruto is panicked. What? Knew I am gonna die. On the other hand in Kanoha, Yami was in his office. With Yoruchi in her jonin uniform in front of him. I need you to go and assist Kakashi. Orders Yami. Yoruchi nods at this. Of course father. Do I need to follow any procedures or anything like that? Yami nods. Don't interfere unless one of them is dying or close to death. Also you can freely interfere if Naruto starts using the Nine Tails Chakra. Yoruchi nods at the sand flash, she disappears in a shunshun. Yami clearly sees her jump out of the window. Countless thoughts running through his head countless scenarios playing all at once, he is calculating all of these, trying to find the best outcome for himself. Gatoha the only reason he even is alive is because he has this role to play. After that, I am killing all of his men and taking over his meager business. Thinks Yami, completely relaxed at this. He has taken countermeasures for everything. So everything will go according to his plan. A couple of weeks later and the second confrontation with Zabuza happens. When Haku dies from Kakashi's Jidori, Naruto can't help but yell at Zabuza for being a cold monster. Zabuza on the other hand seems completely calm on the outside, even as Gato kicks Haku's dead body at least until tears come out of his eyes. Kid he calls to Naruto. Can you let me borrow one of your kunai? Naruto seems surprised at this. But he complies and throws one of his kunai towards Zabuza, who grabs it with his teeth. Fuashi immediately starts running towards Gato, who cowers back gay kill him. As Gato is running he screams in terror. What the hell is wrong with Kanoha always getting in my way? That bastard Hokage of yours and now you. Always getting in my way, never letting me develop, I had no way. How can a killer ninja be so good at business, why can't he just keep to his killer way and stay in his own lane? But even though injured, Zabuza easily cuts through his men like butter and gets critically injured, while at the same time he kills Gato by slashing at his throat. While Gato stumbles and falls off the bridge, he has a terrified look on his face. What we aren't getting paid by Gato anymore. Hell, we will rob this place. Says one of Gato's goons. But as they are about to say something more. A figure covered in lightning runs through them, shocking their hearts and killing them all. This surprised everyone, even Kakashi, as even with his Sharingan out, he could barely keep up with the figure. It all happened in a split second, no one could react plop, as the bodies of Gato's goons all fall on the ground, some with foam coming out of their mouths. That is when the lightning is dispelled and a purple hair beauty is seen, by Team 7. It is Yoruchi, she looks at them and waves. Yo. Brats, hope I am not late. That is when she sees Sasuke lying on the ground covered in Senban. Uh, is he dead? Naruto immediately rushes towards Sasuke, and Sakura does the same too. But Yoruchi already knows that he is not dead, after all she was hiding all along, looking at the battle for a long time. But she decided to follow her father's orders and not interfere, though she might not be a medical ninja like her father, she knows her stuff. So she already noticed that Sasuke wasn't hit in any vital point by Haku. Yami Piav. I looked through the files of the Chunin exam participants. Hmm it seems like quite some people want to apply for Chunin. Well I guess I will accept them all, they should already know the risks involved. Anyway, I will just design the same Chunin exam just like Canon. I wonder if Arachimaru will dare to attack me now instead of Hiruzen of course I already know the answer to that question. So just like this one month passes and here I am. Looking through the eyes of my mosquitoes and spying in the Chunin exam. Yoruchi is in my office, just messing around. I need her here for something about when I give her the order. After they finish the written portion of the exam. I open my eyes and look at Yoruchi, who is just playing chess with her shadow clone that is just sad. Doesn't she have friends? Oh. Right, she actually doesn't have any friends. Still I ordered Hiri. Yoruchi, go and stop Orochimaru when he attacks. Let him battle Sasuke and bite him. Giving him the curse mark, after that you appear and chase Orochimaru away. She just turns to look at me and nods. Dispelling her clone and going away. I know that Orochimaru will immediately run away and never come back here for years if I appear. But if it's my daughter, that would make him stay and continue his plan. As Yoruchi is about to jump off the window, I look at her and warn her. Be careful. She stops for a second and looks at me. I usually never say this, so it most likely took her by surprise. Still, she just smirked. Don't worry dad, I am your daughter after all. I just nod at that. 
That is true. I know that there is no way of her dying or being so easily defeated by Orochimaru. General Piav. Sakura looks shocked as Orochimaru's neck extends towards Sasuke at extreme speeds, and he bites down. Aig screams Sasuke as he feels like lava is going through his veins, going from his neck through his body. Orochimaru smiles at this. Come and seek me Sasuke. When you want power you will come to me. I know you will. As Orochimaru says that, Sasuke falls unconscious on the giant tree trunk. She looks at Orochimaru and with tears in her eyes says. Sasuke will never join you. Orochimaru smirks creepily at that. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure Abu as he was about to talk more Fwashiruchi, covered in lightning, appears next to Orochimaru, and before he even has time to react. Buomyuruchi hits Orochimaru on the face his body flies away like a ragdoll. Going through several trees. Yuruchi immediately follows him, leaving the genin behind. And around 200 meters away, she sees Orochimaru on the ground. But as she gets close, he turns into mud. TCH, he escaped. Fought Yuruchi, looking at the mud substitution technique. She can't even sense him anymore. Though she is sure that the one she kicked was the real Orochimaru. He must have used substitution mid-air. Contemplates Yuruchi, coming to her conclusion. But still keeping her guard up, just in case. Also her hearing and sense of smell is enhanced by her using different jutsu, one belonging to the Inuzuka and the other to the bat summons. He can't hide his presence perfectly after all, especially while moving close by. Arachimaru on the other hand is already underground, quite far away from Yuruchi. As expected of Yami's daughter. She is truly fierce. I wanted to see Yami's son, but that would be too dangerous. Contemplates Arachimaru. Especially now that Yami most likely knows of my presence. What Orochimaru didn't know was that Yami already knew exactly where he was. What he is doing, his future plans and things about himself that even Orochimaru didn't know. Though Orochimaru never underestimates Yami, he can never be at his level of understanding anymore. So Yami's plans are beyond Orochimaru's schemes. Yoruchi just checks around and in the end she does as her father told her to. Now that she finished what she needed to do, she has to go back and look over Kiba. Father predicted that Orochimaru might go after Kiba. And even though Ahokage isn't supposed to be biased. Dad always says that family is everything, even if the whole world hates you, your family will always love you. One week later and Yami is in the preliminaries looking at the genin, he stands in front of them. The genin all feel a certain invisible pressure, as if they must listen to the Hokage. They all assume that this is the feeling of being in front of what is considered the best cage in history. Even some of the other lands have to grudgingly admit that Yami as a cage is effective. Though they still keep propaganda around about the evilness of Yami and Yuzuka. So Yami goes high up in his seat and looks around for any disguised Arachimaru and nope there isn't one. Though there is one of the sound four, Teaya, she is acting as the Jonin teacher of the sound genin team. The first fight was. Sasuke vs Yoroi, just as Yami predicted Sasuke won. Zaku vs Shino, Shino won. Shino truly is something else. Might look to have him in the Anbu, that cruelty needed to cripple an opponent for life is something else. Contemplates Yami. Miss Yumi vs Kankuro, Kankuro won Sakura vs Ino, Tai both got eliminated from the tournament. Now talk about trash level genin, they would definitely belong in the genin core. Judges Yami. Tenten vs Tamari, Tamari won. Hm Tenten is good enough for a genin, but Tamari is not only a counter to her abilities, but at the same time, she is a high chunin level of power already. Shikamaru vs Kin, Shikamaru won. Smart, as expected of Inara. Then comes the fight of Kiba vs Naruto Kiba just looks at his father high on the pedestal while thinking. I will prove that I am worthy of being your son Kiba just gives a side glance towards his father. His body shivers a little, he is nervous beyond belief. He has so many regrets, he was never really good enough to compare to his siblings. Yoruchi is Kanoha's ace and an S rank ninja, she and Itachi used to be in the same class, and if not for Yami stopping her from graduating early, she wouldn't have fallen short of the Acha Itachi, the clan slayer. Then there is Hana, his sister, she is already an elite ninja at the young age of 18, she is also studying under Tsunade, as she will take over when the slug Sanon retires as the head of medical staff in Kanoha. Then there is my brother. Contemplates Kiba. His brother, though seemingly not that talented in the ninja arts, he was always the intelligent one, and he is now the daimyo. Even at 12 years old, his reign is already considered revolutionary. I need to prove to father and myself that I am worthy of being Yami Inuzuka's son. I will make him proud. Thinks Kiba, he doesn't ridicule Naruto or anything like that. If he did it, he knows that his father would look down on him. He always says that an enemy must never be underestimated. He puts Akamaru down from the hood of his hoodie, Kiba, then gets down on his forelimbs. His canine lengthen, his eyes turn into slits and his nails become sharper. Fuashi disappears from the eyes of the genin, and Naruto can't see him at all. When Kakashi sees this, he turns to Kuranai, who has a smirk on her face as she looks at Kiba. It seems like Kiba will get the Chunin promotion this time. Says Kakashi, his lone eye staring deeply at Kuranai. 
who looked at him and had a mocking smile. True, ever since he became a genin, Kiba has been training 8 hours a day. I just train him like Yami-sensei used to train us. It seems like that has quite the effect. As Kurenai says that, she gives Yami a split-second look. On the other hand when Sakura hears this, she gets a little excited. Whoa. So you were trained by the Hokage? Kurenai smiles at this. Yep. It isn't widely known, but back in the day me, Guy and Asuma used to be in the same team. Guy picks up on this and gives Kurenai a thumbs up while loudly exclaiming. Yeah. That was such a youthful time. We having each other's backs while surrounded by enemies. That truly brings back happy memories. Asuma just sighs at this. That was fun for you? We almost died on multiple occasions. It was terrifying, there were even some people who wanted to hurt Yami-sensei emotionally, so they hunted us. Kurenai just chuckles at this. It was definitely dangerous, but I think that at the same time. We found comrades and friends for life at those difficult moments. The genin just look at the interactions between the three with white eyes. Never knowing that some of their teachers were teammates back in the day, and they even studied under the fifth Hokage. On the other hand, in the battle down below. Kiba had pinned Naruto down on the ground and was punching him on the face repeatedly. Give up. Says Kiba, with a cold look on his eyes. Never. Says Naruto, even as his face was all black and purple. Bam Kiba just punches again, this time in the mouth. Knocking out a few of Naruto's teeth. Give up. Newer. Says Naruto, unable to form straight words with his teeth knocked off. Kiba nods at this. I understand. He then just. How slaps Naruto's ears with his palms, with the power behind the hit rapturing his eardrums, as blood starts coming out of Naruto's ears. While his eyes go dull as he sinks into unconsciousness, Kiba then gets up and lets go of Naruto's hands that he had trapped with his legs. He didn't even allow Naruto to use any jutsu at all. The referee sees this and says. Naruto Uzumaki is knocked out the winner is Kib, but as he is about to say that, inside Naruto's mind. He opens his eyes and looks around. He is in front of a giant cage. Where am I? Asks Naruto, confused by the situation. I was just fighting Kiba. Suddenly a harsh and malicious voice comes from the surroundings. If you can even call that a fight. Naruto looked around confused. W who are you? Since that man is out there I can't come outside. But I can give you my chakra, and you will defeat the son of that man. Says the voice, Naruto looks around, and finally he notices the giant red eye inside the dark cage. Naruto couldn't help but ask. Who but before he could finish, he felt his conscience return back to his body. As soon as red chakra starts coming out of Naruto's body. The Konoha Jonin immediately are about to go and stop Naruto, but an invisible pressure stops them all. They look at the source and see that it was the Hokage who stopped them. What is that? Asks Sakura as she can feel the heavy and malicious chakra coming out of Naruto. Kibitu looks at this with white eyes. Fwash but Naruto disappears from his view as Pao, he feels a tremendous pain on his stomach, he coughs out of blood. Suddenly he can feel hundreds of punches hit him. W what is this really that loser Naruto? What the hell, that is cheating. Where did this malicious chakra even come from? As blows rain down on Kiba, he is slammed into the walls, and he grabs Kiba by the hair. Bomb and bashes his head on the floor. The Jonin and the referee wanted TK stops this, but Yami calmly signals them not to do so. Naruto then keeps bashing Kiba's head on the ground until his face is unrecognizable, his nose is bloody and twisted. But he was still conscious, and as he was about to fall unconscious and his head is pulled up by Naruto, he caught sight of his father. Yami like always just had a calm look on his face. Akamaru on the other hand bark jumped toward Naruto, but the puppy was just easily bashed aside and thrown into a wall. Kiba sees this and wants to dot GET up and fight, but he can't. He feels as if his whole body is broken, he isn't far from the truth as his ribs and arms are broken. So it seems like I can't win father. Thinks Kiba, as he gives up. He can't help but remember what his father told him when he graduated. Flashback Kiba looks at his father. So dad, Yoruchi told me that you have a gift for me for graduation. What is it? Yami smiles at this and ruffles Kiba's hair. Remember son, losers are losers, so you must never lose to someone. No matter who they are. Once a loser will always be a loser, unless you are born blessed that is. Kiba seems confused at this, but in the end he smiles. Don't worry dad I will never lose to someone. He gives his father a thumbs up while saying that. Yami just laughs at this and gets close to Kiba. Then this will be your gift from me son. Flashback and I don't want to lose. Thinks Kiba agitated. I will never lose. His hand moves and grasps Naruto's wrist. I will never lose, to no one. I am Kiba Yuzuka, I can never lose. Such a simple ideology, that was all he wanted to not lose so he wouldn't shame his father. Crack Naruto's wrists break under Kiba's grasp, as dark tattoos start appearing all over Kiba's body. Every Jonin's eyes widen at this. He can already use it? Asks Kurenai in bewilderment. Slowly Kiba's skin is covered by tattoos, and his hair starts growing behind his back. Kiba's curse mark spreads all over his body, his hair grows long, 
his nails grow like spikes. His eyes turn black with yellow slits, his skin darkens as Fuinjutsu markings spread all over his body. His face slowly extends out of his head turning into a wolf's head, his body also bucks up a little, and dark fur grows all over his body. Kurenai immediately looks at this panicked. He immediately entered the second stage, that is dangerous. Only elite Jonin of the Inuzuka clan can enter and control that mode. She looks towards Yami, but she sees that he still has that calm look on his face and hasn't interfered. So she calms down, completely trusting Yami. Kakashi pulls up his headband and looks at Kiba. His chakra is moving uncontrollably all over his body. Unlike the elite Jonin like Aki or such, Kiba won't be able to control himself. This technique isn't something that can be just learned by any Inuzuka. Quash Kiba, like a beast, with no technique at all, descends upon Naruto. Naruto's red eyes with slits on them widen in surprise. As Kiba appears below him and Pao Naruto is kicked in the air, due to the strong hit Naruto coughed blood. Kiba in his werewolf form jumps up and is about to catch up to Naruto, but that is when the latter does one hand sign. Poo off a huge cloud of smoke surrounds him as dozens of clones appear around him. Pushing him out of Kiba's way, the clones not only move him out of the way, they also push Naruto on the ground to land. Bomb as soon as Naruto lands on the ground he does another shadow clone hand sign and poof, the whole stadium is covered with smoke as hundreds of Naruto clones appear all over the place. Kiba, though currently unable to think clearly, his animalistic instincts felt a threat from Naruto. I will not lose. Comes the growling voice of Kiba from his throat. I will never lose. Screams Kiba, creating a shockwave, causing most of the spectators to close their ears. But this was also in a way an attack, using his loud sound to hurt Naruto's closens as they all go, poo off dispelling themselves, Kiba due to being mid-air can't do anything. But he finally reaches the roof. He just flips and stands upside down Buam he immediately jumps down, creating a small crater in the thick roof, his power accelerated by gravity. Moving at flashing speeds, Naruto was unable to dodge as bam, an animalistic fist sinks in his stomach. But Naruto is not idle as he grabs Kiba by the throat trying to choke him. Bam 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 bam, they start punching each other, covering themselves in blood. When the others saw this, they couldn't help but think. This is not a fight between Genin any longer, they fight like wild animals. But in the end, with a thundering blow. Bomb straight to Naruto's head, banging his head on the ground and knocking him out. Kiba's werewolf mouth opens and is about to bite Naruto's neck. Kakashi is about to interfere, but Yami is faster as he says. Kiba. An instinct Kiba answers to his name being called. When he looks at Yami growl, he growls like an animal. But suddenly, Kiba stops, as soon as he looks at Yami's eyes. His instincts immediately understood the difference in power between the two. Stop. That is enough. Yami repeats himself, his face completely calm, and he is sitting quite a distance from the current Kiba's position. But his eyes had a different look in them, as soon as Kiba saw this, he whine whines like a dog, falling on his back. Slowly his fur starts falling, and he starts returning back to normal. But as soon as Kiba does a feeling of extreme fatigue runs through his body. His body immediately shuts down, and his conscience slips away. Falling into deep sleep. The referee sees this and says. Winner, Kiba Nizuka. Kakashi immediately appears at Naruto's side, and when he sees the blood and damage. Naruto's face was full of blood, his front teeth are missing. His arms are twisted in weird angles. But suddenly, without Kakashi even sensing anything, like wind. Yami appears beside him, his instincts or anything didn't warn Kakashi. Yami just casually walked past him. W what I didn't notice anything. Not even the wind made noise. He looks at the other Jonin and sees that they too are surprised. No one even saw him move. He truly is monstrous, he hasn't gotten rusty at all. Yami just puts his hand on Naruto's chest and green chakra flows from his hand and surrounds Naruto's body. Slowly bone crack sounds are heard, it is as if watching time moving backwards as Naruto is healed. Even the Jonin were surprised by it, they have never seen something like this. So the mystic palm can be taken to such a level. Even Naruto's T3 grew. This is something monstrous, they could all agree on something like that at least. Yami healed both Naruto and Kiba, so he just ordered the medics to let them rest, and they will be okay. Gara just looked at all of this with a calm look on his face. He wasn't feeling Shikaku's screams for the first time in quite a while. The best was screaming when he saw the Nine Tails chakra, but as soon as Yami appeared. He became silent. The next fight is Niji versus Hinata. Niji has a smile on his face as he faces Hinata. Yo. Hinata, give it your best. Hinata immediately becomes embarrassed at this. Why you too, Niji Nyasen. Immediately they take the Hyuga gentle fist forms, they start fighting each other. But as they fight it is noticeable who has the advantage. That is Niji as he is completely just playing with Hinata, he even advises her as they fight. Be more fluid Hinata. No need to be so nervous. Just imagine the people around us don't exist and give it your all. 
In the end Hinata decides to give up after a couple of minutes, seeing how Niji wasn't even trying against her. Next fight was Lee vs Gara. in the end the winner is Gara, but only barely, and even that was only because Shikaku was strangely cooperative. Yami easily heals Lee's injuries, and he does the same with Gara. And so the preliminaries are decided. Yami just gives another announcement that the next fights will be after one month from today. The fights will be decided by random draws. After that, Yami smirks at this as soon as they go away. Suddenly out of the shadows, Yoruchi comes out and says. So dad, I see that you seem to be truly happy today. He just snickers. You wouldn't understand, Yoruchi. She just pouts at this. You and your secret plans. I am going to find Hana and play chess with her. Yami while still smiling just looks at her. Come on now Yoruchi, don't go and bother you sister. I am not bothering her. So just like this, one month passes and the final part of the Chunin exam comes. Niji vs Kiba comes as the first fight, the winner is Kiba. Due to Niji giving up in the middle of the fight, knowing that he would eventually lose and he didn't want Kiba to exhaust himself again him, and then be unable to fight at full capacity again guys like Gara. Next fight was Tamari vs Shikanaru, he lost the battle but won the war. Then comes the fight against Sasuke and Gara. The fight is intense until feathers start falling from the sky. Yami just looks up and says to the Kazukiage to his side. So what do you think about this? Arachimaru. Yami looks at Arachimaru, who just smirks at Yami and pulls off his skin, who looked like it was Rasa, but Arachimaru's face came from under the skin. Aren't you perfect like always Yami never making even the smallest mistakes? Says Arachimaru, as his long tongue moves around his face. Yami on the other hand just stays sitting down and doesn't get up at all, even though Arachimaru does so. Arachimaru takes off his Kazukiage outfit. The just earns a bored side glance from Yami as he is just lying back on his seat. He then looks forward as he sees Sound and Sand Ninja start fighting Kanoha Ninja. Haha, <laughs> Yami, I know that no matter how relaxed you act. You are shocked by this. Says Arachimaru. You don't need to hide it. Yami on the other hand just sighs, even as the Sound 4 come and form the barrier all around him. To stop him from escaping and stop people from interfering in the battle. Yami still has a bored look on his face. Even as Arachimaru does some hand signs and a crazy smile appears on his face. Slowly, the three coffins are summoned. Let's see if the rumors of you being the best Hokage is true. Says Arachimaru as the three coffins open. Revealing the first, second and third Hokage. Yami just looks at this. So you killed Hiruzen how you probably did it by using poison. You are too weak to kill him quietly otherwise. States Yami, already knowing the truth and that Kabuto actually poisoned Hiruzen. As the Hokage open their eyes, Hashirama and Taburama look confused while Hiruzen looks at this gravely. You were poisoned by Arachimaru old man. Says Yami to Hiruzen, who nods at this, on his face is a calm look. Most likely an Edo Tensei side effect. Hashirama looks at Yami and when he sees his uniform, he says. Oh so you must be the current Hokage. Yami just nods, turning towards Hashirama. You are quite powerful first Hokage. But it seems like your current form is too far away from your peak. You can't even seem to be in control of your own body. Yes. Says Hashirama as his hands clasp together. Yami then says. That's a shame then. Because in your current form swash, in a dark flash bomb bomb bomb, the upper bodies of the three previous Hokage are obliterated in a split second. Arachimaru doesn't even have time to react as Yami grabs him by the throat. Crack breaking it immediately with no difficulty. But out of Arachimaru's mouth a white snake jumps towards Yami's face. Fwash but Yami easily catches the snake and gives it and gives it a powerful squeeze. Pop. Popping the snake like a balloon, killing it. Yami looks at his uniform and sees a couple of pieces of blood at the bottom of it. He just takes them off, and under it is a dark version of the Jonin uniform. The Sound 4 who are holding the purple barrier look at Yami. They are absolutely terrified of him, Yami just looks at them. I think that you should give up. They look at Arachimaru's body once more and they dispel the barrier. He just smiles at them. Fwish. And decapitates them in a split second. That is when the Anbu arrive on the roof, but when they see Arachimaru's dead body and everyone else's they are a little surprised. Yami just looks at them. You guys are too slow. I already took care of the enemy. Yami then looks at the Kanoha below him fighting. Go and look around, Arachimaru planned to use a chemical poison to kill all of Kanoha. So go and see if it was activated. The ninja immediately go away. And it is true Arachimaru did do that, his plan was to threaten Yami and all that. Suddenly next to him another person in Anbu mask appears next to Yami, but unlike the other Anbu, he has a dark cloak around him. What are your orders Yami-sama? Yami just says calmly. Arachimaru isn't dead yet, keep spying on him. Also try and convince Sasuke to run away from Kanoha just like Arachimaru planned. The figure nods and disappears like the wind. Fwash. Yami disappears again in a dark flash, and before the people can react. He kills the sound ninja by frying their brains with the lightning surrounding his body. But the sand ninja, he just incapacitates them. 
And in under 5 minutes the battle was over. That is until a giant sand raken appears in the outskirts of Kanoha. But even then Yoruchi looks at the beast in front of her. The giant Tanuki looks at her. So you are Yami's daughter how Yoruchi doesn't answer at all. She just appears above the beast's head where Gara was sleeping. No time to be sleeping, little brat. Says Yoruchi as she just uses a little lightning chakra. BZZT shocking Gara away can the sand dispelling. Yoruchi grabs Gara in a princess carry and. Fwash jumps off the sand. Gara just looks at her strangely, his eyes are full of conflicting emotions. In the end he can only ask. W-Y? Hmm. Yoruchi looks at Gara. she then makes an annoyed face and says. Shut up kid, be glad I saved you. As the victim you don't have a say in it when I rescue you. And just like that, the 5 minute war was concluded in the end, Arachimaru was used as the scapegoat of the whole thing was solved by Kanoha and Suna, having an arranged marriage between the cage's families. The marriage was between Tamari of the Sand and Kiba and Yuzuka. The funeral for the third Hokage was held. Even Jiraiya returned back, he was sad at the outcome of it, a lot of Kanoha's citizens are mourning during this period. And during the funeral, Yami gets close to Jiraiya and says. I think that you should train Naruto. Now that Hiruzen is gone, the little super secret boy band that you made to stop my power from growing will fall over now that Hiruzen is gone. Jiraiya's eyes widen in shock at this as he looks at Yami. Who just shrugs. You thought I didn't know? This is my village, I know everything that goes on inside. Jiraiya wants to ask Yami if he had any involvement with Hiruzen's death, but he stops himself. He knows how dangerous Yami can be, he has already lost a finger. As Jiraiya starts walking away Yami says to him. Oh. By the way, I suggest that you finish training Naruto quickly. After all you did conspire against a Hokage, and I would usually execute you for that, but I think that you would be more useful in a suicide mission. Give your life for Kanoha, and if you survive, your sins will be forgotten. Jiraiya winces a little at this, but in the end he just nods. Yami smiles and waves at him. Bye bye Yami Piav. One month after that day and here I am in my office, trying to whistle the Game of Thrones tune, and that is when Naruto barges in my office. We need to save Sasuke. I just look at him. Get in line and come back later. Other people need to be saved too. I casually dismiss him. But I see that Naruo gets angry and screams. Listen here Yami. We need to go and save Sasuke. When he talks to me that way I stop playing around and release a little bit of killing intent. I think that you should be careful about the way that you talk to your Hokage, Naruto. General Piav. Naruto's body trembles when he feels Yami's dangerous vibe. Yami then looks at Naruto in the eyes. Next time ask me nicely, and by next time I mean one hour from now. Naruto seems like he wants to refute this, but the look on Yami's eyes promised something bad would happen. So Naruto listens to his instincts and goes outside. As soon as he does Yami smirks. I am not someone who can just let people talk to me like that. I am the Hokage, I need to seem like above everyone else. Anyway sadly I only have around 20 years to stay in power. By then people will be more educated and will see the uselessness of having a Hokage or even a Daimyo. By then Jinja will just be turned to soldiers, and the Hokage will just be the stronger soldier. Contemplates Yami, he knows that the control he has over the world will just continue to slip away. Right now is the peak of his political power. He could kill anyone he wants, and there would be no public persecution or anything like that. But this isn't the absolute power I want. After all, the god doesn't need the permission of anyone to do anything. He can destroy the world, and the other beings can do nothing but accept their fate. So political power to me is just a tool. I don't even really need it. Power is only absolute when it is omnipotent and omnipresent. Thinks Yami, as his eyes have a glossy look in them. He wonders what he will feel when he sits on that empty throne. He knows that he will never be able to find someone to truly love in this world. Everyone he looks at seems like it will break and wither away as soon as he touches it. He knows that he can't allow anyone else to be immortal like him. They will betray him with 100% certainty. He doesn't want that, even if he in a way cares for Yoruchi, he can let her go and die without a shock to him. After all, it is just a cycle of life, his first family will die too he winces a little as he thinks of that. But he takes a deep breath. He understands what he has been and is currently doing. He will kill children and sleep like a baby the next day with no problem. He is selfish, greedy, cruel, hypocritical, lustful, gluttonous and every other sin someone can think of. And he knows that. It seems like I will be a little lonely if no, when I reach the top. Thinks Yami, completely confident in himself. He knows that he will be either obliterated from the universe or reach godhood. These are only two possible alternatives for him. But he has 100% confidence in himself, for he can't allow his heart to waver. He knows that he will either reach his goals in 20 years, or he will never reach them. One hour later Naruto comes in, he has an angry look in his eyes. But this time he speaks with a respectful tone. Sasuke has been kidnapped. We need to have a team to go and get him back. Yami just nods his head. I know, I have already sent Anbu after him. It has been discovered that he has gone with them willingly. 
If there is a confirmation of this, he will be killed, we can't allow the Achiha clan to be revived out of Kanoha. Naruto is shaking in anger at this. What? How can you say that? Yami just looks at him calmly. You think that just because you open your mouth you will be Hokage? That isn't how the world works Naruto, you will never be Hokage if you support a missing ninja. Kanoha already suffered when a weak Hokage was sitting in his chair. Another one and Kanoha might not even survive. Naruto seems conflicted at this. But Sasuke is from Kanoha. This village should help its ninja. Yami sighs at this. As I said, if Sasuke was really kidnapped, we will obviously help him. If he went willingly he will be eliminated. B but. Stammers Naruto, not knowing what to say. But what? Says Yami as his voice becomes harsher. By the look on your face you seem to not believe in Sasuke. And seem to know that he went by his own violation. If that is the case then you know what will happen. We can't sacrifice the many for the few. How many Kanoha ninja do you think will die if an Ichiha clan is developed outside of Kanoha? It will be in the thousands and all of that blood will be in your hands. A Hokage must make hard decisions like this, not be unsure and stamper around like a headless chicken. As a Hokage it is my responsibility to look out for Kanoha, not Sasuke Naruto seems downcast by this. But Yami's eyes glint in a scheming light as he says. But I will give you a chance. Really? Asks Naruto with a joyful look on his eyes. Yes really. Says Yami, then he takes a scroll and throws it towards Naruto. This is your mission, bring back Sasuke Chiha, low difficulty air rank mission. If you can do that, Sasuke will only have his chakra pathways destroyed and won't receive the death penalty. If you can do this, he will be hunted down just like every other missing ninja. Naruto nods at this and goes outside with a heavy look on his face. Yami on the other hand smirks at this. Yami P of. During my first life, I always wondered how someone like Naruto can exist. But now it makes perfect sense really. He isn't Naruto at all, he is just a child with a mask on his face. And that mask took him over, Naruto acted nice to everyone, he lied to himself, and now the lies have become the truth. His mask took him over, Naruto used this mask too much, and he now is that mask. People trying to be nice become really nice when the mask takes over. This is the danger of the perfect act. Even I would be tricked by it if I didn't know the truth. So in a way the whole talk no jutsu that Naruto gives is simply a lie. It works in a way like I work, I give people hope due to my power and absolute certainty on what I do, so people like to rely on me. The same is with Naruto, people accept him and hive in his talks due to them all wanting to depend on someone like Naruto, who believes no he knows of a better world. But what they all believe in is all just another giant lie, a lie that they tell to themselves so much until it becomes the truth. It seems like the crown for the best actor in Kanoha goes to Naruto. The child who will never be, someone who can't even be considered a person anymore. He is just simply an ideal of a child. I know that Naruto can be dangerous to me in the future, but he is also useful. He is someone who isn't wise or smart at all. So in general he is easily controlled. If I can control Naruto I can a smirk appears on my face, let's see how this goes then. I have already put countermeasures against something like that. Plus I have Kodamatsukami and I have used it on multiple people already. I used to be just another scared in Yuzuka, who was too afraid for his life, but now I am the man who has this world in his palm, and so the world dances to my tune, just like a monkey. General Piav. Naruto immediately goes, chasing after the one who kidnapped Sasuke and he had a dog in his hands. Or more specifically he is currently carrying a ninkin that Shiro gave him. This will help him track Sasuke easier. Wait for me Sasuke, I will bring you back. As Naruto is chasing after Sasuke, Shiro takes this moment to grumpily say. I am just a simple dog with a strip club. I am not that strong. Naruto nods at this. No need to worry, I only need you to track Sasuke. Shiro yawns at this. Sure, just go 12 kilometers forward from here and you will meet him, it seems like he together with his companion, have stopped running. Naruto nods and keeps jumping from tree to tree, suddenly he looks at Shiro in curiosity. You can even tell so much with just your sense of smell how does that even work? Shiro looks annoyed at this. Don't ask stupid questions or I am jumping off from here. You really are like the Hokage Yami, no wonder you were his ninkin. Says Naruto. Shiro doesn't say anything, he just positions himself on top of Naruto's head. Stupid brat, as if someone like you can ever comprehend someone like Yami. He is an entity that cannot be understood by anyone in this world. In comparison to him we are all just stupid idiots. Thinks Shiro, full of conviction. He knows how Yami is, he hates it when a brat like Naruto even dares to think that he can understand Yami. It doesn't take long for Naruto and Shiro to catch up to Susuke, and the other guy had red hair, and he had horns on his head. Shiro looks at the giant sealed urn next to the guy and says. Sasuke is inside that urn, but we must fight this guy first, he doesn't seem like someone to just let us go. Naruto nods at this, and he makes a shadow clone, and puts out his hand with his clone scratching the air around his palm, and slowly a Rasengan is formed in his palm. 
Take this! Screams Naruto as he charges towards the person who has a smirk on his face and charges towards Naruto as slowly straight lines spread all over his body. Turning his skin red and the horns on the top of his head extend and he charges towards Naruto. But as soon as he sees that Naruto is close by, he smirks and his body shines red. Shiro sees this and his eyes widen a little. It's a suicide bomber. Boom both Shiro and Naruto are enveloped by the explosion. Sasuke is woken up by the sound and he breaks out of the giant urn. With dark energy all around him, he looks at his hand who nor has a dark gray color. This this power. It's amazing. Think Sasuke, totally in a trace as he looks at his hand. If I continue growing like this, I will finally be able to kill Itachi soon. He looks around him as the dust settles he sees Naruto on the ground with seemingly no injuries, but he then sees a dog who looks like Shiro, with half of his side missing and bleeding out. So that mutt protected the doe ban will die out soon. Think Sasuke as he looks at this coldly. He then turns around and starts walking away. But then he suddenly as soon as he turned around he felt a coldness in the air. His body is fully covered in cold sweat. W what? As he turns his head to look behind him, his body freezes in fear. A giant red eye looks at him. It is a giant dark wolf looking down on him, steam is rising out of the creature's mouth, and a dark chakra leaks out of its body. Who said that you could run? Says the creature, its voice terrifying, but it had a trait of a voice who was familiar to Sasuke. S. Shiro exclaims Sasuke absolutely terrified. The now giant dog's smile turns malicious. Bingo. Sasuke immediately jumps back, and while mid-air. Shiro smiles at him mockingly. Rookie. He opens his mouth and dark energy gathers. Pew a giant beam of darkness is shot towards Sasuke. Fuashi suddenly discovered that he could fly using his giant hands on his back. That was close. Shiro just smiles at this. So you can fly? Well I can easily take care of that. Pints his claw towards Sasuke. Immediately hundreds of dark beams are shot towards Sasuke's direction. It doesn't take long for Sasuke to be easily immobilized by Shiro. He is currently looking at the downed Sasuke, who has half his belly missing and one of his legs missing. He is on the ground bleeding out, with tears on his eyes as he looks at Shiro. Shiro on the other hand has an apathetic look on his face. You think that it's easy becoming a missing ninja? You must really consider the Hokage as someone dumb? Pathetic, you are ashamed to the Ichiha clan. Then he brings his claw down to crush Sasuke. But suddenly Sasuke is swallowed by a snake and poof reverse summoned, Shiro just looks at this. Damn really no one can comprehend Yami. How the hell did he know this would happen? He makes me feel stupid. He then goes toward Naruto and puts him on his back. I really made a good decision by opening a strip club, a killer's life really isn't for me. I would rather spend my time on hookers and cocaine than this shit. On the other hand an Arachimaru's base Kabuto was experimenting with a test subject. As it is on the medical table, the test subject has a curse mark in the middle of his chest, Kabuto runs some chakra through the curse mark and does one-handed hand signs. Ugsecrium's the person on the table, but he is under certain drugs so he can't really scream, except heave his body shake in pain, and small sounds try to come out of his throat. Slowly as his skin turns dark red due to the transition to the second stage of the curse mark. Slowly his body starts convulsing, and out of his curse mark the head of a big white serpent appears, the serpent looks around and it opens its mouth. Slowly a man with pale skin and dark hair comes out. It is Arachimaru, as he opens his eyes and looks at Kabuto. His eyes narrow. You brought me back? Kabuto nods at this. Yes, Lord Arachimaru. Arachimaru nods at this. It seems like I was easily defeated by Yami. But I am not surprised at the defeat, I am more surprised at his power. Yami has definitely grown stronger. Kabuto pushes his glasses up, reflecting on the light. Yes it would seem to be so. Also somehow he got a hold of our plans. It seems like we have a leak from the inside. Arachimaru looks at Kabuto when he mentions this rhetorically asking him. I wonder who it is. Kabuto frowns in thoughts. We need to do a clearing of all the people in here. It could be someone from Hidden Sand, but we must be sure of this. Arachimaru's gaze becomes even more intense as he looks at Kabuto. I think I already know who it is. Kabuto seems surprised at this. Oh, you do? Well I guess it is expected of you Lord Arachimaru. Burst Arachimaru's hand pierces through Kabuto's chest. Cough Kabuto coughs blood at this, looking down at the hand unbelieving. You are the spy. Says Arachimaru simply. Yami really infiltrated deep, he had spy right under my nose, and I never noticed. As expected of someone like him. Well I can play at that too. As Arachimaru says as he looks at Kabuto's dead body. Arachimaru notices that Kabuto has something on his body. He pulls something from his ninja pouch and sees that it is a scroll. He frowns at this and opens it. But he is immediately irritated to no end at what he sees written inside it. Game accepted snaky by the one and only dark cage. Arachimaru rips the paper in anger. That fucker. He already predicted that I would kill Kabuto. He fucking thinks that I am one of his little pawns I will show that bastard. 
I just yawn a little, seeing that Orochimaru killed my spy on him. I mean he took someone who was known to spy for Konoha under his wing, what did he expect? I am not as incompetent as Danzo, Kabuto truly was my spy. He was really talented too, but at the same time he was disposable so it doesn't really matter anyway. Anyway, Naruto was brought to a hospital too. What loser, he didn't even get to fight Sasuke and would have actually died from the explosion if Shiro wasn't there. Talk about recklessness, anyway, Sasuke is a missing ninja, and Orochimaru is training him at an abandoned temple in the land of rice. Funny, Orochimaru thinks that he can escape from my schemes and be more than a pawn. He doesn't understand that ever since he escaped Konoha he has been my pawn, Kabuto would make shit up about a person, and Orochimaru would kill them, he was the perfect scapegoat. But now he is lying low to give the rest of the world the illusion that he is already dead. I put a B-rank difficulty on capturing Sasuke, but I put an A-rank bounty because of his valuable bloodline. But that is for show mostly. Arachimaru isn't the only one who marked Sasuke. He is Indra's reincarnation, of course I have countermeasures against him. Plus I have tracking Fuinjutsu along his spine, the inside of his skull and at the bottom of his heart. Also countless poison and explosive seals all along his body. I didn't go easy on him. Arachimaru won't notice this stuff too due to my advanced Fuinjutsu making my markings invisible. Even the Horatian mark on Sasuke. Some time later, Shiro and then Tsunade come into my office. Shiro is in his miniature puppy form and is just snoring at the sight of the room. Tsunade on the other hand comes and reports something to me. Jiraiya asked me to take one Sakura Haruno under my wing. As she said that she sits down on the chair in front of me. Her ample breasts giving me a good view of her cleavage. But I still just sigh at this. You can take her as a student if you want. I am not stopping you. Though I say that casually Tsunade narrows her eyes at me. So she won't suddenly die in a mission. Oh, she thinks that I will kill her. Don't worry I won't kill her. I am not that vain or controlling just because you got a student that I will kill her. I am quite unsure about that, you could just kill her because you decided that Jiraiya might be up to something by doing this. I just shrug at this and casually say. Oh no it isn't that at all. It was just Naruto begging him to try and convince you to take Sakura as your student. Tsunade seems a little amused when she hears this. You just admitted to spying on very private conversations. No I didn't admit to anything like that. I just told you that I know of this. And how do you know of this? By using my brain. You are 37 years old now, but you still act like a kid sometimes. Ma, you worry too much about age. When in reality it's just a number. So me and Sune joke around for another half an hour, while Shiro just gives us a glance every now and then, due to waking up from our daughters. But as soon as Tswand is outside, Shiro just looks at me and says. You wanna fuck that big titty milf you just don't wanna admit it. I look at him laying on his back, he really even talks like a trashy person. Sigh sometimes I wonder where did I go wrong raising this dog one week after that, and here I am, in one of my bars, except some waitresses there is no one here. Tsunade is drinking some whiskey, I am sitting next to her. So I just look at her as she drinks and seems sad. I understand that she must be thinking about her dead family. Jiraiya and Naruto were allowed by me to go on their little training trip. General Piov. Yami puts a comforting arm around Tsunade. She seems surprised by this and looks at him with white eyes, in the end she just leans on him. Is this our punishment for our sins? Asks Tsunade. Yami perks up at this. No. He answers. It isn't a punishment, because God doesn't exist. If he did exist, allowing things like this to happen don't you think that he would be a cruel god then? Sun looks surprised at this. That is a pretty depressing outlook in life that you have Yami. As Tsunade says that, she is no longer talking to Yami as her student or as a child. Not even as her leader. She is talking to him as a friend and someone who she can rely on. Depressing but true. Says Yami. To keep people from desperation, that is why God was created. Even if he exists, then he must be pretty afraid of his creation as he never visits. Tsunade smiles at this. So God is like a deadbeat dad Hayami shrugs at this. Well he doesn't exist. There is no proof of him. But religion does help some people keep a calm state of mind as death closes by. Tsunade smirks at this. But sadly, death is a fate we will all have to accept. Even that fool Arachimaru, in his quest for immortality, he doesn't know that in the end, everyone will die. When the sun explodes or when this world ceases to exist. Yami nods at this. Yep, everyone will one day die. But even while he says that, on the inside he also added. Except me that is. Tsunade stops leaning on him and looks at Yami, in his dark emotionless eyes. We will all die and our lives will all be unimportant in the end. Yami smirks, but he shakes his head. That is not exactly correct, after all, but as Yami is about to continue he is stopped by Tswan's lips landing on his. She then withdraws and looks at Yami. Surprised you didn't I? Yami's surprised face morphs into a gentle smile, he shakes his head at this. You are a really needy woman you know that. Sleeping with a married man. She smiles at this. 
As if I don't know that you have already fucked your own student, your secretary, some Jonin women and even your dog walker. If you weren't cheating with me, you would definitely be cheating with someone else. Yami smirks at this. Yes and if I keep this up. My wife might become an alcoholic like you. Sun looks at his eyes as she just gets up and sits on his lap facing him. As if you care. Seeing the look on Tsuan's face Yami's smile turns malicious. You are really evil aren't you? Even though he says that, he knows the real mental state of Tsunade. He can see her flushed face and heavy panicked breathing. She is having an existential crisis. But then again I didn't even have to try that hard to get results. Manipulating someone as mentally fickle as Tsunade is truly easy. Concludes Yami, Tsunade seems about to come and give him another kiss. But as he grabs her by the back of her head, pulling her for a kiss and his other hand starts exploring her body and unbuttoning some things while taking off some others. While Yami was having an affair with Tsunade. Yoruchi was at home, just looking at her stepmother who is only a few years older than her. Koyuki, Yami's second wife just looks at the clock, it's 3 am. Yoruchi cringes a little at this. They are both in the living room, Tsum and Hana have already gone to sleep. But Yoruchi is staying with Koyuki, not wanting her stepmother to be alone while waiting for her father. In the walls of the living room there are photos of the family being all happy with each other. On the surface, our family seems like a perfect family. But under that, we are a family who is very chaotic. Thinks Yoruchi. She sees that Koyuki pulls out a flask and starts drinking from it. Yoruchi cringes at this even more. She drinks to forget father's infidelity, he will sleep with another woman every night. Is this really worth it father? Ruining your family just because of your lust. As Yoruchi thinks her hands shake, she doesn't know how to comfort her mother. She knows her father is a terrible man, lying to herself about this is useless. But Yami is still her father, and the person who would burn down the world for her, she knows this much, she will never go against him. That is sure of her. But sometimes she can't help but question her father. Going around sleeping with other women when he has a beautiful wife here back home. He even has Tsum. You are truly greedy, father, aren't you? Yoruchi looks down at the ground, not having the face to even look at her stepmother as she drinks. Tomorrow morning, Yoruchi and her stepmother had fallen asleep. When she opens her eyes, she looks around confused for a second, but she sees that she is in her room. Oh yeah, yesterday dad worked too long and stepmom was worried. So I decided to wait together with her. Recalls Yoruchi, remembering the last night. As she gets up, she goes back in the kitchen, and there she sees Kiba messing around like always, and her father is there too. He seems to be cooking, when he sees her he just smiles. Good morning sleepyhead, sorry I was too busy yesterday, and it required my personal attention so I couldn't come back home. Yoruchi sees her stepmom sending her father a certain look. Ugh so they did it last night or something. Damn it now I have images on my head of my parents having sex. Yami just looks at his family with a smile on his face. Well, manipulating memories with the Yamanaka technique and my own techniques has amazing results. I have a stable family because of that. Honestly though, this is quite amazing. I can cheat on my wife as much as I can, with whomever I want, it's like in college and still come back to a happy family, what could a father wish for more? As Yami contemplates stuff like this, he smells that it's the perfect time to take out the bacon. Hmm, now that is a nice aroma. Says Yami as he divides food to each plate. Kiba immediately digs in. This is amazing dad. Yami smiles at this. The main ingredient is love. The others smile a little at this. To them, Yami is truly the perfect husband and father. Just like this three years pass, a big number of the genin in the Kanoha 12 are now Chunin. Naruto and Jiraiya return to Kanoha, they don't see any change in it. Except maybe a dozen or so skyscrapers added. They go towards the Hokage's tower, which seems to have gotten bigger. There also seems to be some new traveling methods called trains. This is so cool. Exclaims Naruto, looking around in the new machines who he hasn't seen anywhere else during his travels with Jiraiya. His mentor, Jiraiya on the other hand just smiles a little as he sees Naruto still act like a child, even when he is 15 now. Come on Naruto, we must go and meet the fifth Hokage, you know how he can be punctual about time like this. Says Jiraiya casually, he knows that no matter how harsh and controlling Yami is. He wouldn't punish them harshly for just being late. As they enter Yami's office, they see him to be singing a stack of documents and throwing them at one of the Anbu hidden in the shadows. Who takes them and goes outside by using the window. Yami goes back to writing, not paying any attention to Naruto and Jiraiya in front of him. Jiraiya and Naruto seem uncomfortable at this. Not knowing how to act, so Jiraiya decides to just fake cough. Cough Yami doesn't stop writing, but he just says. The Akatsuki have become more active, I want you to investigate this Jiraiya. Naruto I need you, Sakura, Kakashi to go and rescue the Kazuki Ijigara, he has been kidnapped by the Akatsuki. Alaso Yamato and Yuzuka, and Sai and Yuzuka will be accompanying you. They both nod at this and immediately say. We are ready. Yami nods at this. Also Naruto, Kakashi will explain the details to you. 
but you will be meeting Sai and Yamato later on in the mission. Yami goes back to signing papers, Naruto and Jiraiya see this as Yami dismissing them so they leave. As they exit the door and go outside, Yami stops writing and throws his paperwork towards the shadows. His face morphs into a smile, he has this perfect little scheme going on. After some days Naruto, Kakashi and Sakura go to the land of sand. Tamari was in Konoha to meet them too. As they see Naruto waving at Tamari. Yo. Tamari, you are here too. She smiles at him and nods. Yep, I live with my fiancé now. Naruto's eyes almost pop out of his head when he heard this. W what fiancé yep, I am engaged to Kiba Yuzuka now. Says Tamari, shocking Naruto even more. After Naruto's shock, they started traveling, Tamari started explaining to them the situation. Kiba is also already in the sand village, and since he is already a jonin and was sent to hidden sand in order to help Konoha's ally. Naruto scrunched his face even more. Kiba is a jonin Kakashi intervenes at this by saying. Yes, he became one at 15 years old. He is the only one of your generation to become jonin. It's considered quite impressive for his age. After a day of traveling like this Naruto tells Sakura and Tamari that he is the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Sakura noted at this and promised herself that she would protect Naruto from the Akatsuki, who is hunting their tailed beast down. Tamari was thankful that there was finally someone who could understand Gara. Still they continued their journey toward Hidden Sand. After arriving at Sunagakur, Team Kakashi learned of the attack on Kankurum. Despite the failed attempt by the medics on hand, Sakura cured Kankurum, thus demonstrating her skill with medical techniques. Sakura also developed several portable antidotes rather quickly. During this time Team Guy was also sent as backup by Yami. As Team Guy were traveling, they met Kissam. Guy immediately goes into serious mode when he sees who it is. Seventh gate open. Before Kissam could even react. How his side was destroyed. Guy immediately said. Let's continue on. As he said that his team was completely surprised by this. When Guy saw this he just said. I don't think that he is the real Kissam, he is too weak to be an s rank ninja, so be careful. They all nod at this. As Guy killed Kissam the real one was in the Akatsuki hideout, helping the other members to extract the one tails from Gara. The hideout was in a dark place, with a strange statue with two giant hands and cuffs. The only members here are Sasari and Dadara, the others were all just projections. Kissam's projection looks at the other members and says. It seems like my puppet was destroyed by Kanoha's green beast. Pain looks at him and says. It doesn't matter, we have enough time to make the extraction process happen. Even if he came here you two don't need to fight the green beast, I will reverse summon myself to your place. Sasori and Dadara nod, but Kissam is the one who points out something by saying. That wouldn't be smart, allowing the green beast in here you might be able to defeat him. But if the Hokage decides to use the Horatian, Pain you will be slaughtered by him. Pain looks at Kissam and shakes his head. Yami and Yuzuka might be strong, but even he can't fight against God. Sasori takes this time to interfere by saying. It wouldn't be smart to attack someone like Yami, we do need to hide from someone like him. He is the one most likely to destroy our plans, if we somehow get the power of all the tailed beasts and gain the ultimate weapon, maybe then attacking him first would be an option. I know your power pain, but you haven't seen Yami and Yuzuka's power, they say that he is the most powerful shinobi to ever live. Even Sasori's scorpion puppet's voice that hides his real body which is a harsh voice everyone can sense the hidden trace of fear behind the cold surface. Pain just looks at Sasori. Neither do any of you know my real power, but anyway, time to begin now. We must extract the one tails. Kissam still seems unconvinced by this. He knows that anyone who ever wants to become a ninja swordsman of the mist must learn about Yami and Yuzuka and escape plans against him. Especially made for him. He is beyond dangerous, and even if the seven swordsmen are together, they are to avoid a confrontation with Yami. They immediately start the sealing process after some time team guy arrives at the hideout, but Nenji has his Byakugan activated and warns his team. There is a barrier around this place, there are also four tags that seem to be the keys to it. Guy nods at this. That might be a trap too, but one we will have to take. So be careful, we must save the Kazakiage as fast as we can, before it's too late. That is when Kakashi, Naruto, Chiyo and Sakura arrive, and Guy explains to them the situation. But suddenly out of the shadow of the trees another person comes out, he is wearing an all-black Jounin uniform. It is Kiba and Yuzuka, he has a serious look on his face as he says. They are currently inside the barrier, I can smell the two of them. Chiyo looks at Kiba and can't help but think with a small smile on her face. You truly are Yami's son, Kiba and Yuzuka, I will leave Tamari in your hands. Kiba, Chiyo and Team 7 decide to go in while Team Guy coordinates the extraction of the seal, and while triggering any traps that might be there, because they don't have time to slowly break the seal. So they must do this. After this happens, Team Guy activates a seal that makes them fight clones mirroring their power. But Guy immediately recognizes the seal. This is a seal that even Yami-sensei can't easily make. But they must have used the cursed method of seal placing by making sacrifices. 
Damn this will be a little troublesome. But while this is happening, Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, Chiyo and Kib arrive at a cave where they see Gara's dead body lying on the ground, while Dadara is sitting on it. Sasari is inside his scorpion human-like puppet. He looks at the people in front of him and breathes a sigh of relief. It seems like the green beast isn't here. Dadara smiles at this. You worry too much Sasari. The green beast is no yummy, no need to piss your pants over something like this. Shut up Dadara, you are stupid, also it seems like we have his son in here. Says Sasori, as he looks at Kiba. Dadara seems a little surprised at this, but then in the end he laughs at it. Hahaha, <laughs> I was surprised for a bit, but he doesn't seem like anything special. Naruto on the other starts leaking red malicious chakra out of his body. He looks at Dadara sitting on Gara's dead body. Get up from Gara. Dadara smiles smiles at this. Come make me kid. As he says a bird made out of white clay, takes Gara's body and flies away with Natuto immediately giving chase to him. Kakashi follows them too. Stop. Naruto don't act reckless. Kiba seems undecided by this for a split second. But in the end he decides to stay. Guy will help Kakashi, I need to stay here to help Sakura and Chiyo against Sasari. Kiba P of. Looking at the S rank ninja in front of me, I can't help but contemplate if I should go into werewolf mode immediately. But that would be dangerous, I currently can't keep the technique active more than 20 minutes. After that, my stamina and chakra will be drained, and I will be useless in this fight, this is a hard decision to make. But I get on my fours, I can feel Akamaru on my kunai pouch, he is transformed into a kunai, in case I need it for a sneak attack. I can feel my eyes turn into slits as my nails lengthen, and my claws become more pronounced. This will be the first time I will be fighting an S-rank ninja seriously. I will need to see the distance between me and him first wash, I move at extreme speeds as the ground below me cracks. I doubt that someone like Sakura can even follow my movements anymore, as I form my hand into a claw-like form and run chakra through it. I see that Sasori doesn't seem to react to me as his eyes don't follow me at all. I immediately go for the guy's neck clank, but I see that it is somehow clocked by a wooden construct that looks like some type of scorpion tail. Immediately I go under it and hoe for his neck. He turns to face me and I can see that he opens his mouth. Pew x10 immediately I can hear some type of mechanism shooting something at me. I can barely dodge sideways and not get hit when. Crack I hear wood cracking and see that Sakura has stoked the wooden scorpion tail from attacking me. Chiyo immediately yells at me. Be careful brat, don't try to take him on your own. I nodded this and jumped back. I tried to see if a surprise attack might work, but it seems like that wasn't the case. Well it doesn't matter, I simply need to keep attacking him until I can read his rhythm. His most dangerous weapon should be his poison, but dad already made sure that I am immune to tens of thousands of poisons. I trust in dad that this poison won't work on me too, I mean someone like Sakura can make an antidote against this, I definitely know that dad can do something 100x better than it. It seems like I will have to come out and fight you for real now. Says Sasori, as his body breaks apart. Revealing a young, redeated man. He gives Chiyo and Sakura a glance, but his eyes stare at me. You know, if it was your father at your age, I wouldn't dare to approach him at all. He was terrifying, I could count the ninja that would have the courage to do so in one hand, but even then, I would have some fingers left over. I keep a calm face when he says this. I know what he is doing. He is trying to rile me up or something like that. Sadly for him, I know better than to fall for petty tricks like this. Flash I immediately rush him again, maybe I can destroy him this time. As I approach him, he looks at me and smiles. Bad move little dog. I can hear Sasori say add suddenly a puppet comes from underground, it has shoulder length spiky dark blue hair suddenly out of the ground, I feel something grab into my leg. Stopping me from advancing at all. When I look down my eyes widen in surprise as I see that it is iron sand. What how can he do that, only close members of the Kazakiju's family can. Suddenly I am all surrounded by iron sand, and I can feel it coming at me to squish me to death. Kiba P of. I can feel my body starting to get crushed by the iron sand. Immediately chakra runs through my body, and I am covered in black markings all over my body, only activating stage 1 of the dot. Boom I easily break through the iron sand and try to immediately go on attack, I see that Sasori is frowning when I do that. So he isn't panicking at all, then a direct attack on his body would most likely be useless, just like the previous time so Wash, I go for his arm and rip it off. But I immediately feel something weird, the arm as I look down at its shit, is his whole body a puppet. I see that his hand drops off and a hidden knife appears from the arm that I ripped off, and the blade comes towards my head. I immediately jump back with a frown on my face. I give Chiyo a side glance and see that she and Sakura are fighting the puppet, who seems to be able to somehow have the Kekei Genkai for iron sand control. Sasori is fighting all three of us without high difficulty, even if I win like this can this be called a true win. I know that as I am right now, I can't defeat someone like Sasori head on. But I will never lose. Not to someone like Sasori, nor to anyone else. 
I can't lose, once I lose I will never be able to stop losing, dad always said that and he has never lost. I want to be just like my father, so I too will never lose my curse mark enters stage 2 immediately I can feel my senses sharpen and an instinct will rise, but I easily suppress both of them. I look at the S rank ninja in front of me I can instinctively feel it. This is not enough. I need more I can feel my body starting to overheat. Akamaru jumps off and transforms back to his real form he looks at me. Bark I stop as I hear Akamaru. I look at him and see the worried look on his face. I smile at this. Don't worry Akamaru, I will never lose. He barks one more time. I stop for a split second and answer to him. You are right Akamaru, you are my Ninkan, so help me never lose. I am surrounded by a huge cloud of smoke, and my senses go into overdrive. I can feel my senses starting to slip away no, I will control this power perfectly. General Piov. Sasori's eyes widen at the thing in front of him. He immediately starts to summon his army of puppet butt fwash, he feels a huge gust of wind behind him, which pushes his hair up. He hears a creepy voice behind him say. I will win. Aura. He punches Sasori, and before he can react he is plummeted into the ground breaking his body to pieces. But Kiba's attacks don't stop. Aura 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 aura. Buom creating a giant crater below him Chiyo and Sakura look at this, surprised at Kiba's and his attitude. But it doesn't take long as 10 seconds later. Poof the giant werewolf mode is dispelled, and Kiba together with Akamaru are in the ground. Kiba is almost unconscious just like his Ninkan, but before he slips into unconsciousness due to chakra exhaustion, he puts his hand up. I I won. And he immediately slips into unconsciousness. Yes, you did. Says a voice belonging to neither Sakura or Chiyo. They look and see the head of Sasori, it has cracks all around, and it seems all broken. It seems like I was defeated that kid is truly something isn't he? Chiyo takes this time to get close to him, and she looks at her grandson with a sad look in her eyes. Sasori though Sasori can't see anything anymore, and this is only a piece of his resident chakra talking through the head. As his weak point is already destroyed by Kiba's rampage. Don't worry Grandma Chiyo. Says Sasori. I have already made my choice. He then looks at the sky as he thinks of his parents. Though I never planned on dying this way Chiyo doesn't say anything as she uses her chakra strings to manipulate the two puppets who look like Sasori's parents they go and hug Sasori's head. When he feels that his face morphs into a smile. Tell the kid that he has a long way before he can even look at his father's shadow. Chiyo looks down sadly. But Sasori can't see this so he just says. By the way, I heard that you are looking for Rajamaru. I have a trade meeting with him in Tenchi Bridge in the Land of Grass. His chakra starts leaking away until it all of his chakra dissipates, but not before he whispers. Can you believe it the guy didn't even dare enter the land of fire, during the time of the fight with Sasori, Naruto and Kakashi were chasing after Dadara. Kakashi activated his own version of the Manjukum Shuringen, and aimed to use it to take Dadara's head. However, it was difficult to aim, and all he managed to remove was his arm. Dadara tried to retreat, but Naruto destroyed his clay bird with Rasengan, and retrieved Gara's body. Enraged and powered by the Nine Tails powers, Naruto seemed to be defeating Dadara with Rasengan, but it turned out to be a clay clone. Still enraged, Naruto started to appear feral as he transformed into his two-tailed form. Kakashi recognized the bad sign and used a seal tag he had received from Jiraiya to stop the transformation from proceeding any further. Naruto subsequently reverted back to his normal form. As the rest of Team Kakashi and Team Guy caught up with Naruto and Kakashi, Dadara found himself unable to escape. He swallowed some clay, turning himself into a human bomb. Niji sees this and tells everyone to get away. Dadara then swelled up and detonated. As the dust settled, Kakashi collapsed from exhaustion, explaining that he used his Manjukum Sharingan to send the explosion to another dimension. With Naruto carrying Gara's body, the two teams headed back to Sunagakur. Stopping in a grassy field near the village, Sakura checked on Gara and pronounced him dead, making Naruto very upset. Chiyo moved towards Gara and tried to use her reincarnation technique, but didn't have enough life force left to bring Gara back to life. Naruto gladly lent his own chakra, and Chiyo was able to revive Gara at the cost of her own life, while the shinobi of Suna watched. While this happens Kiba is still unconscious due to his extreme chakra exhaustion. But during this time at the battlefield where Dadara's suicide exploded himself. The ground moves a little and someone comes out from underground. It is Dadara, he had one of his clones explode, making it seem like he himself did a suicide bombing. Suddenly out of the trees two people wearing Akatsuki clothing appear. One of them is wearing a spiral orange mask with the only opening in one eye of the mask, this is Toby. The other seems like he is half fused with the tree, and half of it seems like made out of darkness, while the other half is pale. This is Zetsu. Toby looks at Dadara's pitiful state, and he cheerfully says. Yo. I am Toby. So you were pitifully defeated huh Dadara seems annoyed at this. Who the hell are you bastard? He is your new partner. Says Zetsu. Yep. That is I, the most powerful ninja Toby. Dadara frowns at this. 
I don't need this clown as my partner. Zetsu just melts into the tree. Sure, solve this amongst yourselves. Just do it quick or Yami and Yazuka will flood this place with his mosquitoes, and you will both be dead then. TCH Dadara is annoyed, but he still listens to Zetsu and starts walking away. Oh Dadara Senpai you don't have any arms, I just noticed. Wow, you really got beat up like a weakling. A tick mark appears on Dadara's forehead. Why you Yami pee off? I smile as I see that Kiba has finally reached his potential. The giant werewolf mode is something that none of the Inuzuka elite jonin have been able to do yet. If they were able to do that and hold the technique for some time that immediately puts them in the S-class power. My son, you have come quite far, at the age of 15, soon to be 16, you have defeated an S-rank ninja. You are quite ahead of everyone in your age group, but sadly you will be surpassed by Naruto and Sasuke soon. I can't allow you to grow to their level son, you are my child, and I care about you Kiba. But sadly you have a paranoid father like me, so you will never grow at their level. But at least you aren't a loser yet, so don't worry son. 18 hours later, Naruto and Sakura are in front of me. Arachimaru will appear at Tenichi Bridge. We want the chance to try the Sasuke Retrieval Hokage Sama. Says Naruto with a respectful tone in his voice, he also has a nervous look on his face. Even Sakura seems to be nervous. I look at them with a serious look on my face. I will let them leave and do that, but I want to make it seem like this is the last time they can pull this bullshit. In all honesty, they can do it as much as they want. Currently the Hokage position is no longer that beneficial to me. I could have the same results if I put someone who has my best interests in their mind, so I am planning to do that soon. I worked hard for the Hokage position, raising my political power and all that. But the time has come for me to leave this behind, of course I will only do this at a later date. Once the fourth ninja war is over. That is the best time when I can try and dedicate all of my time and research, and a way to true omnipotence and omnipresence. In the end I just say to Sakura and Naruto with a harsh tone. This is the last time I will allow a capture, the next time you meet him I need you to go for the kill. I see them shudder a little when they hear me say that, but he knows better than to refute me to my face. Also you two will have two new teammates, because Kakashi is unavailable due to using the Manjekyo Sharingan against Adara, and Kiba is in chakra exhaustion. Your new teammates will meet you tomorrow, they are Yamato and Sai, two jonin. One of them can also handle Naruto if he decides to become troublesome if he uses the Nine Tails chakra. Naruto looks down in shame when he hears me say that. He knows that he must get a control over his chakra, or else he will only be a bother to every one of his teammates and hold them down. General Piaf. Tomorrow early morning, Naruto and Sakura are at Konoha's East Gate. After all, even though Konoha now is a big city with skyscrapers, it's still surrounded by a wall and a barrier. I wonder who our new teammates will be. Wonders Naruto aloud. That is when in a shunshun two figures appear. They are both wearing jonin uniforms, one of them is a pale guy around Naruto's age, the other seems like a man around his twenties, with a slight tan and spiky brown hair. They are Sai and Yamato. Yamato looks at them and nods with a small smile on his face. Hello Yamato and Yuzuka here. I am your new squad leader. This guy next to me is Sai and Yuzuka, another Kanoha jonin. Sai smiles and waves at them. Yo. I heard a lot about you from Kiba. Naruto and Sakura smile respectfully too. Nice to meet you, Yamato, Sai. Yamato's smile brightens at this. Well, okay now guys, time to go and fight Arachimaru. Don't worry we will kick his ass and bring Sasuke back to Konoha. Says Sai, encouraging Naruto. Though we might have to kick his ass a little too. Hahaha <laughs> Naruto smiles at this, to him it seems like Yamato and Sai are both good guys who seem hopeful at getting Sasuke back. Yamato then pulls out two pills and gives them each to Sakura and Naruto. There are some tree seeds that will allow me to track you, in case we get separated while looking for Sasuke. Sai has already eaten one like that. Don't worry this will be digested in 72 hours, so I won't be able to track you forever. Naruto and Sakura nod at this. Tomorrow they will possibly fight Orochimaru, they must be prepared in every way, and they know that. 10 hours later and they are still traveling at top speeds. 2 hours later and they are close enough to the meeting place for tomorrow. They set up camp, as they take turns being the lookout. When it's Naruto's turn, Sai wakes up and sits next to Naruto. The latter doesn't say anything, they just stay in comfortable silence. Until Sai says. You know I don't know how you feel. But I too have a brother. If he did something like Sasuke did, I too would be willing to do anything to get him back. He then nudges Naruto's shoulder and says again. So don't worry, we will do everything within our powers to get Sasuke back. Naruto nods at this absentmindedly. Thanks Sai. Sai just smiles and goes back to sleep again. Tomorrow, during midday. Yamato is disguised as Sasari. Wash that is when Arachimaru appears on the other side of the bridge. He has a smile on his face as he looks at the person in front of him. Hmm so Yami isn't here personally is he? Immediately Yamato understood that he had already been found out. Immediately Naruto, Sakura and Sai appear next to him. 
Arachimaru's smirk widens even more when he sees this. Did Yami send you guys to your death or something like this? I mean he is smart enough to know that you can't defeat me in any way. Or maybe he will use Horatian to teleport here. Yamato looks a little nervous at this on the inside. Though he is an s rank ninja in his own right. Even he isn't sure if he can win against someone tricky like Arachimaru. Arachimaru looks at Naruto who has started leaking a little red chakra. Hm I wonder who is stronger? You or Sasuke? Says Arachimaru as he mocks Naruto. The latter immediately roars out loud. Roar with that simple roar, he blows Arachimaru away. Yamato gives Naruto a side glance and contemplates. If I let him weaken Arachimaru, then I can use my wood style to easily suppress him, my wood style being a direct counter against him. But Arachimaru has no way to deal with Naruto Arachimaru appears again, coming out of the woods and this time, a piece of skin has fallen off his face. Revealing the body that he has taken over. When Naruto sees this he immediately goes into the three tails state. Chasing after Arachimaru and clawing at his face. Buam Arachimaru is slapped away through the forest. His body rummaging through trees. Naruto immediately goes to chase after him, breaking the bridge they were standing on at the same time. Yamato sees that they are about to fall, so he grabs both Sai and Sakura, while he jumps away. Sakura has a mortified look on her face. While Sai looks a little nervous at this, he glances at Yamato and says. Will we even be able to handle Naruto? Yamato nods confidently at this. Don't worry, as long as he doesn't go at the Six Tails form, I can safely purge the Nine Tails chakra out of him. Sai nods at this. Then I will go to the hideout and look for Sasuke. Sakura seems confused at this. What? We know of one of Arachimaru's hidden close by. If he's here it means that there is a high chance Sasuke is there too. Answers Yamato. Sakura looks amazed at this. Sai, let me come with you. Sai shakes his head at this. I am specialized in stealth and you are not. I can go in stealthily and find Sasuke safely. Sorry Sakura, but I will have to go alone, it's safer this way. Sai says that and pulls out a scroll, drawing a bird on it. The bird comes to life and Sai climbs up on his back flying away. Sakura just looks at this, her eyes filled with sadness. Yamato brings her out of her daydreaming by saying. Sakura, let's go, we need to help Naruto against Orochimaru. Immediately as Sai flies towards Orochimaru's hideout, Yamato looks at Sakura and says. Stay here, don't approach the dangerous situation, I will look for an opening to take out Orochimaru while he is fighting Naruto. She wants to refuse this, after all to her it seems like they are using Naruto like a weapon and beast, not like a human. But she thinks back on how this will help them save Sasuke, so in the end she didn't say anything. On the other hand, in the battle between Orochimaru and Naruto. The latter has already gone into Four Tails Chakra mode. His skin is being burned by the chakra, while at the same time regenerating, creating a constant process of healing and injury. This increases cell division in order to activate the healing, so by doing this Naruto is constantly losing lifespan. Arachimaru sees this and smiles. Someone like him knows perfectly well how a tailed beast cloak works when someone doesn't have control over it. Suddenly out of Naruto's body, countless dark and light balls of condensed chakra are released. Confusing Arachimaru at why he is doing this. Is he going to create a tailed beast bomb or is each of these chakra balls a miniature beast bomb? If it's the latter it won't really be a threat to me as expected, the Nine Tails Jinchuriki has turned into a beast with no logical fighting skills. Thinks Arachimaru as he sees that Naruto in his tailed beast cloak, pointed his tails toward his mouth, gathering the chakra balls that he spewed out from his body. So he is creating a tailed beast bomb, while it seems like this is an inferior way of creating one. The fourth Mizukage, Yugura. He can create a tailed beast bomb in seconds. Calculates Arachimaru, and he sees that the chakra is concentrated so much that it causes a crater to appear around Naruto. When he sees it, he immediately comes to the conclusion that the Nine Tails Beast Bomb is much stronger than the Three Tails, and even he can sense that the Triple Rashomon wouldn't be able to stop the bomb, but only redirect it. So he waves through some hand signs and clasps his hands on the ground. Slowly out of the ground two coffins appear, they have the numbers 1 and 2 written on them. Let's see how you deal with wood style, Naruto-kun. Says Arachimaru with a creepy voice. This enrages Naruto in the Four Tails Jinchuriki cloak, so he immediately throws the tailed beast bomb towards Arachimaru, who still has a smirk on his face, as the two coffins are about to open. But before they can open, wood comes out of the ground, sealing the coffins shut. Yamato, who was quite a distance away smirks at this. Arachimaru's eyes widened at this as he saw the tailed beast bomb heading toward him. He knew that he didn't have time to wave more than five hand signs. Before he can even think of what jutsu to use his body already has started waving through the hand signs. Puafi put half of his chakra into the jutsu, and his body is surrounded by dozens of giant snakes, slithering around him in a protective way. And that is when the tailed beast bomb hit them. Boom Arachimaru could feel the heat of the explosion, and in one second of the snake's bottom, he waves some more hand signs and. 
Poofy disappears in a puff of smoke, but he still wasn't quite fast enough, as reverse summoning is slower than summoning, so the right part of his body was completely obliterated. Yamato frowns at this as he feels Orochimaru going away. TCH seems like I couldn't kill him, even when I waited for the right moment. He then looks at Naruto and sees him rampaging around. Well, time for you to go to sleep Naruto. He goes through a couple hand signs, and giant wood hands appear below Naruto. Bomb squishing his body, making him unable to move. Yamato immediately appeared next to him, and even as Naruto cracked the wood and was about to break through Yamato clasped his hands together, and trees started growing around the giant hands that clasped Naruto's four-tailed form, as the nine tails chakra was being drained. Then Yamato does a few more hand signs, and the kanji for sit appears on his hand. He then touches Naruto's forehead and jumps back, a line of chakra connecting his hand and Naruto, as the latter's Jinchuriki chakra is slowly suppressed. Ruoair and the roars slowly turned into Naruto's scream. When Yamato sees Naruto with his burnt skin fall on the ground, he winces a little and makes a wood clone to go and call over Sakura, so she can heal him. Damn this is quite tiring. Yamato complains out loud. While during the same time Sai had found Orochimaru's hideout, and as soon as he entered it. He opens his giant scroll and instantly draws dozens of snakes who become animate creatures. They immediately go through the different tunnels, searching for Sasuke. A couple of minutes later Sai is still waiting for his snakes to return, and that is when. Boom, an explosion is heard by him, he immediately goes of where the sound came from. When he reaches the place, it was just a scorched room with some black ink on the ground. So one of my snakes found someone, possibly Sasuke, and that person attacked immediately. Thinks Sai as he comes to his own logical conclusion. It seems like he is no longer here. He turns around, but as soon as he does so he comes in contact with a pair of Sharingan looking straight to his eyes. S shit is Sai's last though as his eyes got dull, and he plummeted to the ground, unconscious, falling under a Jinjutsu. Sasuke comes out of the shadows and frowns when he sees the Konoha headband on Sai. So they have discovered this hiding place too. Contemplates Sasuke as he starts walking away. On Yamato's side, Naruto has woken up and he was a little tired after being healed by Sakura. But they immediately started going towards Orochimaru's base. Sai is already there searching for Sasuke. Informs Yamato. I can sense from the tree seed in his stomach that he is still alive and well, so no need to worry about him. Naruto takes this moment to apologize by saying. Sorry Yamato-sensei, I only became a bother and didn't help with anything during this whole mission. Yamato smiles at this and looks at him. Naruto, don't worry about such small things, is Konoha ninja always look out for each other no matter what. So don't stress about such a small matter. Plus the Hokage did send me specifically for in case something like that happens. My wood style can suppress your tailed beast chakra so don't worry. After some time they arrived at the entrance of Orochimaru's hideout, which was just a temple which seems to go underground. As they walk down the stairs, Yamto signals Naruto and Sakura to be cautious, there might be traps around here. When they arrive at the bottom of the stairs they are in a dark lit tunnel, with only smikatels at the side of the walls as the only source of light. Yamato crouched down and put a finger on the ground, sending a chakra wave with it. Sensing the surroundings all around them, this is the sensory technique used by the second Hokage, so it had a very wide range, easily encompassing the whole underground hideout. Yamato fronds for a second and starts running forward. Sai is on the ground, he might be injured or in critical condition. Immediately Naruto and Sakura follow begging him with haste. Worried that Sai might have gotten injured. Sai, you better not be dead. Yami doesn't allow any Inuzuka to die without his permission. Thinks Yamato worriedly. When they arrive at Sai's location, they see that he is on the ground unharmed, making them release a breath of relief. Yamato notices that he has only been put under a Jinjutsu. He breaks him out and Sai immediately opens his eyes and says. It was Sasuke, I know here he is going. I put some tracking ink on him as I was about to fall into unconsciousness. Naruto seems conflicted at this. So. Sasuke was the one who put you under the Jinjutsu. Sai nods at this. Yes, but don't worry I was only caught by surprise, it won't happen again. This time we can beat his AS and bring him back to Konoha. Says Sai in order to cheer up Naruto and not let his guilt get in the way when the battle comes. Immediately Sai starts chasing after where he sensed that Sasuke was. The others all followed him from behind. Two minutes later and they reach an open ground and can see the sky, they look around and see that they are inside of a crater. Naruto's eyes land on someone in front of him. Someone that he hasn't seen in a long time. As Naruto and Sakura see Sasuke standing on top of the crater and looking down at them. They can't help but feel overjoyed. S Sasuke whispers Sakura to herself as a tear rolls down her face. Naruto on the other hand is more aggressive in his approach as he screams at Sasuke. Sasuke that day when I was knocked out why didn't you try to kill me? Is this the way that you separate bonds? When Sasuke hears that he has no reaction to it. But on the inside, he winds at the memory. 
He remembers how Shiro almost killed him, and if it wasn't for Rachimaru sending a snake to bring Sasuke back he would have died that day. But he is too proud to admit that. So in the end he just says. I have my own reasons Wash. He appears right next to Naruto, and he puts his arm in front of his throat, and as he pulls out his sword he says. But today, on a whim have decided to kill you. But as he pulls out his sword Kuasangi and is about to stab Naruto. Wash Sai appears and grabs Sasuke's hand. Time for round two. Says Sai as he takes a deep breath and push spews out black ink towards Sasuke at point blank range. But Sasuke immediately jumps back and cuts the wave of ink in half, he frowns when suddenly. Wood comes from underground. Immediately a dome of wood locks Sasuke inside, and he has to run chakra through his blade and jump out, but immediately hundreds of vines appear from the ground and chase after him. Suddenly out of nowhere a tsunami of fire comes and clashes with the wood, destroying it in process and stopping it from advancing. Arachimaru appears next to Sasuke, who is generating chakra into the air, and his hand has a huge concentration of chakta. But Arachimaru appears next to him and catches Sasuke's hand. This is not the time to do this, Yami Zanbu are nearby. Sasuke calmly nods calmly at this and disappears together with Arachimaru and Ashunchan. Yamato sees that a lot of smoke has appeared around them. He waves through some hand signs and he spews a huge amount of water out of his mouth and gets rid of the fires. Sai on the other hand frowns at this. It seems like this mission is a failure. On the other hand in Kanoha, Yami has a frown on his face. He recently hasn't been able to track some of Akatsuki's members' movements, that is Abito and Zetsu, he has always had problems tracking the latter. But he has always had an eye on Abito, but now that he has joined Dadara as Toby, he has changed they are flying as a method of travel and killing any bug that got too close to them. He can obviously tell their location, but to someone like Yami, who would like to know everything about everyone he doesn't like not knowing something. Currently Abito and Dadara are fighting the Three Tails, so he finally gets up from his Hokage's seat like it was a throne, and made a clone temporarily replace him. It seems like I myself must act. Thinks Yami as he sighs a little at this. Suddenly his eyes turn into the Sharingan and slowly morphing into the Manjekyo Sharingan. His body disappears in a spiral space ripple. At this time Dadara sees Toby messing around by swimming next to the three tails. Dadara throws some C4 clay bombs to knock out the four tails, and that is when suddenly a space ripple appears in front of him, and his eyes widen as. Fuashe hand with unimaginable speed grabs his throat as another spatial hole appears, and a strange looking Sharingan appears out of it. Suddenly Dadara's eyes go dull for a split second, and the person who attacked him disappears as soon as he came. Dadara finally comes to his senses. He looks around strangely and thinks. Right, I should report to Yami about the recent events. Yami returns back to Konoha and dispels his clone sitting back on the Hokage chair, as if it was a throne. Now I feel comfortable again. Thinks Yami as a relieved smile appears on his face. Two weeks later news of the two and three tails getting captured by the Akatsuki appears, and Yami decides to make an Akatsuki suppression mission. Giving it to Asuma and his team. He looks as they are in his office and sees Choji, Ino and Shikamaru who are already Chunin. He looks at Asuma, who has a serious look on his face as he reads his S-rank mission. In the end he just nods. Hokage no Yami-sensei, how hard do you think this mission is? Yami smiles and says. Well it's actually more like three S-rank missions in one. But I have absolute trust in you Asuma. Why do you want to leave it to someone else? Asume smiles back. No way, these bastards recently just killed one of my friends. I couldn't wait to get a mission like this. A dense chakra comes out of Asuma, making it seem windy even though they are inside. His team looks at him surprised, they have never seen their teacher in rage before. He is usually nice and kinda soft. Two days later and as Kakuzu with Haydn, were in the land of grass, and just delivered a body into the bounty station, and as they come outside Buom, a giant gust of wind came towards them, Kakuzu dodged to the side, but Haydn was thrown up by the wind. Suddenly like a shadow Asuma with a cold look in his eyes appears behind Haydn, and he has a kunai in his hand as. Fwishi decapitated Haydn, and Asuma then uses his body as a foothold to jump towards Kakuzu. His kunai is coated in wind chakra as he goes towards Kakuzu like a wild beast. But the latter waves through some hand signs. Throwing a giant fireball towards Asuma who smiles at this as he is consumed by the fire. Suddenly from behind Kakuzu, having used the replacement jutsu with a rock behind Kakuzu. Swish Asuma stabs Kakuzu in the back, and he falls on the ground. Asuma's eyes widen as he feels someone behind him, he jumps forward as he sees that the one that he decapitated, is now up and running with only some dark stitches around his throat. He is a little surprised at this, but he immediately comes down and looks at Kakuzu lying on the ground. It would be safe to assume that that guy isn't dead then. Thinks Asuma he then sighs a little and screams. Shikamara now. Suddenly two shadow tendrils come towards Haydn and Kakuzu locking them in place. Asuma winces at this. I hate using this jutsu, but whatever, the best time to use it is now. As he says that, he summons a Rasengan in his hand. 
He then infuses a huge amount of wind chakra in it. Then the technique takes the form of a giant wind shrunken making a wind cutting noise and throws it to the now restrained Akatsuki, who had no time to dodge at all. Boom, the two of them are shredded to bits and Asuma starts breathing heavily as soon as he throws the technique. But he still looks at them as they get shredded to pieces. Eno, do you sense them? Calls out Asuma loudly. No. Answers a voice from inside a tree. Asuma nods and he makes an earth clone, and as the Rasen Shuriken settles down he checks them, and the clone nods at him. Immediately he uses a fire jutsu, burning the bodies, just like Yami had ordered him. Suddenly out of three, Ino, Shikamaru and Choji come out. They are all surprised at his quickly Asuma took out 2s rank ninja. He even made it look easy. Wow you are so strong Asuma-sensei! exclaims Choji in surprise. Asuma looks at them in annoyance. What, did you assume that I was a weak jonin or something? Ino smiles at this and uncomfortably says. Well you spend most of your time playing shogi with Shikamaru Suo, an angry tick mark appears on Asuma's forehead. What the hell? You brats, we will have triple training today during the end of November, in one of Arachimaru's bases, a 16-year-old Sasuke is in deep meditation, wondering about a decision that he should make lately. He knows that soon Arachimaru will try to take over his body. And no way he will accept that, so he can either escape Arachimaru or kill him. But what he doesn't notice is the space behind him cracked behind him, and a hand appears and grabs his head. His eyes widen and he attempts to go for his sword, but before he can do anything of the sort. His eyes go dull for a split second, and the hand retreats back into the space crack, and it disappears as if it never happened to begin with. When Sasuke comes back to his senses, he frowns a little and thinks. If I can't defeat someone like Arachimaru, how can I ever hope to kill Itachi? And Kanoha Yami looks at the man in front of him, Jiraiya is in Yami's office. He is sitting in front of Yami, with his posture completely relaxed. I need you to go to that suicide mission I told you about. Says Yami, calmly and leaving no room for discussion. Jiraiya doesn't seem startled about this, he just sighs in resignation. His eyes are empty as he looks Yami on the eyes. Yami can I ask you something? Yami nods when he hears this. Yeah, sure, I don't see why not. Jiraiya interlocks his finger and winces a little when he sees his missing pinky finger that was cut off by him in order to appease Yami. Yami why does someone like you get everything in life? You have Tsunade in one arm and other women in the other. During my whole life, I have been the best man I could be. I tried to fix the world however little I could. Tell me why? Why does someone as terrible as you get everything I ever wanted? Jirais clenches his fingers. I hate it I am so jealous of you. Your power, women, money, and Tsunade. Why? Why does someone like you get to live happily? Jiraiya speaks his heart out to Yami. Expressing his envy towards Yami and his lifestyle. His clan and his fame. Yami on the other hand listened to this with a calm look on his face. He could definitely see where Jiraiya was coming from. He didn't say anything when he was called evil by Jiraiya straight to his face. Because even though Yami doesn't see himself as evil, he knows that he has done and continues to do horrible things for his own benefits. He doesn't hate anyone that he has killed because at first hating a dead person is stupid to him. And second, he doesn't lie to himself in order to console himself, yes he is mostly killing killers, except some innocent children and clans. But even then they too are people, and he has accepted that he doesn't have the illusion of being a good person. In the end, Yami thinks for a second on what to say to Jiraiya, in the end, he just says. I am not saying that you doing good actions has anything to do with it. Nor do my so-called evil actions have to do anything with this. It's just simple, I am powerful, that is all that there is to it. Power is just power, I have everything because of it. If you have power but don't have something else, then that means that you just don't have enough power. Does that answer your question? Jiraiya looks at Yami white eyes full of shock in the end, he smiles a little and sighs. I see he then gets up and walks away, Yami smiles at this as he sees Jiraiya's back. It seems like quite some people must disappear from Kanoha's history. Thinks Yami, he has already manipulated the books by educating the children that Yami is the best Hokage. The adults already see the improvements that Yami has made, so they don't need to be convinced. This whole generation of people in the land of fire is in Yami's palm. Weeks later, the news of Jiraiya's death comes. Naruto is devastated by this and his recent failure. Months later, the news of Sasuke killing Orochimaru came soon after that news of him killing Dadara and Itachi Uchiha. He still hadn't returned to Konoha when the news of Sasuke joining Akatsuki became public. Naruto fell to the pit of despair and was instructed by Yami to go and train some more in Mount Mayaboku with the Toad Sage. During this time Sasuke was filled full of rage. He couldn't help but blame Konoha for Itachi's pain and also the person named Hazenberg, together with the Hokage, Yami and Yuzuka. It was a new year, in January, that is when outside of Kanoha. Five people with orange hair and one of them looking like a cyborg. They all have the Rinnegan as they look at the giant skyscraper buildings that Kanoha had all around it. Pain narrows his eyes as he sees the barrier around Kanoha. That will be hard to break through. 
thinks Nagato, as he looks through the eyes of all of the pains. It would be smarter if we sneaked in and then attacked. There are no mosquitoes or any other bugs, not even animals around. Signifying that there is no way Yami and Yuzuka can know of our attack, and even if he did, he wouldn't know the exact time. At this time Yami is in his office, not working or anything like that. He looks at the woman below him as he impaled her with his rod. Oh. Yes Yami. Moans Tsunade, she was lying on her back Yami grabs her breasts and starts pounding her. Tsunade howled as the pleasure that had rapidly built up in her loins, finally became uncontainable and bucked as she climaxed explosively. Simultaneously, the pulsating member of Yami erupted within her, which escalated the bliss that was driving all thought from her head. Their entwined bodies pulsed again and again, each wave of pleasure slamming into Tsunade like a tsunami, draining her of energy. It felt as if her very life force was being sucked out of her through the depths of her clenching loins, their very exodus fueling the intense pleasure she was feeling. Tsunade let her head roll back, going completely limp as she surrendered herself to the embrace of the arms that held her. All thought of resistance, of how wrong this pleasure was, momentarily driven from her mind, she didn't care that Yami has a wife and children of his own, and that if this affair of theirs was made public, it would ruin both of their reputations. At the same time, the pains decided to transform into some travelers who were supposed to come to Kanoha, they killed the six travelers. Nagato also dropped their level of chakra supply, making them at the level of the normal civilians. No technology, no bugs, animals, or humans spying on us. Thinks Nagato as he goes towards one of Kanoha's security, the Chunin just waves them to pass them through. Nagato smiles at this. No matter where humans will always let their sloth take over at boring jobs like this. He immediately claimed to one of Kanoha's high skyscrapers. When he is up there, there are a lot of other tourists around them. Then Nagato points his palms down towards Kanoha. An invisible wave of gravity was released from Payne's hands. The power within it is enough to easily topple Kanoha. Yami and Yuzuka, our biggest threat to our plans. You have to die for my vision of the world to come true. Thinks Nagato, as he has a cold look on his eyes knowing that today he will have to slaughter the hundred of thousands of innocent people that live in Kanoha. But suddenly the invisible force is stopped as a secondary green barrier is erected all around the invisible force, locking it in, and even though the barrier cracks, no power escapes it. Pain looks at this calmly, they already know that for them it would be almost impossible for Yami to not notice their presence inside Kanoha. But they still came here, they know that Yami is greedy, and they will have an advantage here as Yami doesn't want any collateral damage. They know that he won't be able to protect a giant city while at the same time fighting them. They think that they have him in checkmate, it doesn't matter if they die fighting Yami. If they destroy Kanoha that is enough for them. It will send everyone a message, and even if Yami is enraged, what is he gonna do? Nothing because he can do nothing at the same time in another place, Nagato, while controlling the pains, his real body is hidden in a tree hundreds of kilometers away from Kanoha. Conan is next to him as she looks at him with sadness in her eyes. She can see that as he uses his chakra Nagato is slowly dying. A single tear comes out of her eye, remembering the countless sacrifices they have made to come here. Their dream of world peace is so close, only the nine tails is left, and then they will have enough power to stop the world from fighting anymore. Let's see if Yami can stop Kanoha from being destroyed by me. Thinks Nagato, as he uses more chakra to use another All Might push. But suddenly out of nowhere a hand grabs Conan by the back of her throat, and Yami appeared out of her shadow. Nagato's eyes widen at this. Yami has a cold look in his eyes and says. One more attack on Kanoha and I will have my way with her right in front of you. Nagato's eyes are full of fury as he looks at Yami. But Yami simply positions himself and uses Conan as his meat shield. I will rape her right in front of you. Maybe I will even use some clones and make this a gangbang, don't mess with me says Yami, as his cold aura intensifies. Why ya woo woo? Nagato's eyes fill with fury when he listens to what Yami said. Me? Me what? You are about to kill hundreds of thousands of people for nothing. Criticizes Yami, as if he has the moral high ground. Nagato's chakra intensifies, and he seems ready to attack Yami immediately. But Yami squeezes his hand, making Conan scream in pain as she feels electricity running through his neck and all over her body. I might decide to torture her too if you keep this shit up. Says Yami casually as if talking about the weather. Nagato clenches his teeth in anger. You bastard what do you want? Yami smiles when he sees that Nagato's chakra calms down. That is good I want you to pull the five pains out of Kanoha. You have five seconds five four three immediately, Nagato pulls his hands out of the weird tube machines that he has his hands in. He does some hand signs and slams his hand in the ground. Coffee coughs blood as the five pains appear, Nagato breaths heavily at this. But he still looks at Yami. But suddenly Yami disappears in a dark flash immediately decapitating the six paths of pain. He goes in front of Nagato and in half a second Yami's hair retreats back into his skull, and he becomes bald. Suddenly eyes appear on the top of his head, and one of the eyes looks at Nagato. Conan looks terrified at Yami's appearance. One of the eyes in the back of his head looks at her too. 
I then grab Nagato's neck and crack breaks it killing him, as his eyes are still dull, and he disappears out of there in a space swirl. I could've killed him in the beginning or used Kotamatsukami immediately. But he might've noticed me gathering chakra and ordered his pain's attack. So I took the best possible action, I lied to him and took care of him. This is how it is when you have a weakness Conan was his undoing. Damn, I am all horny now, I was in the middle of fucking Tsunade when these goofballs decided to attack. Thinks Yami, then his mind wanders towards Conan, if he should have his way with her in the end just another Kotamatsukami, and it will make her willing. Nah, Conan with her piercings is too much for me. He just took out a syringe and got some DNA sample from the Rinnegan, and disappears in a dark flash in the end, Yami went and had his clones throw a dozen or so S rank fire jutsu towards Konoha, and he used his barriers to fight them. He looks at flames as they lick the walls of Konoha, but he just pulls out huge water walls. He yawns a little as he completely wrecks the outside of Konoha. He knows that he needs to make it seem like a great battle went on outside. Four hours later and Yami is on top of the Hokage Tower, and his clones order people around, helping the civilians go into the shelters around Konoha in case Akatsuki attacks again. Yami already said loudly enough that Konoha was attacked by Akatsuki's leader, and that he already killed him. But the latest of the Akatsuki might attack, so it's better for them to go to a shelter. Manipulating news and the people's perspective like this is really easy when you have control over information. And using fear to control people is the best way to make them comply. Thinks Yami, trying to learn something from this experience. He doesn't consider himself an amazing leader and he likes to advance. He is chasing after godhood and god is perfect in every way, so he must be the best leader. Suddenly he senses a chakra signature appears in Konoha. It was Naruto, who just finished learning sage jutsu, he returned from Mount Mayaboku. Fuash Yami disappeared in a black flash and appeared next to Naruto. Surprisingly, Naruto immediately turns to look at Yami, as he can sense him due to Naruto being in his perfect sage mode. The Akatsuki leader is dead. So no need to worry. Says Yami with a smile on his face. He can see a relieved look appear on Naruto's face. He looks at Naruto and says amusingly. What? You think Konoha is in such a bad position that it needs a kid to save it Naruto smiles when he hears Yami's amused voice. You know, Hokage-sama, I guess I still have a long way to go before I can become a Hokage. Yami laughs out loud at this. Hahaha, <laughs> yep. He then looks at Naruto with a fond look on his face. Naruto it seems like you are strong enough to know about your family now. Naruto's eyes widen in shock once he hears Yami say that. Yami looks Naruto in the eyes and says. Your parents I knew them quite well. Naruto looks at Yami with a shocked look on his face. Yami has never really said anything to Naruto about his parents, even the previous Konoha elder. Here is an only told Naruto that his parents died during the Nine Tails attack. Naruto is intently staring at Yami, waiting for him to at least say a name. Your mother was Kashini Izuamaki. The previous Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. That hits Naruto like a lightning bolt, shocking him to his core. But Yami doesn't stop there as he continues saying. And your father was Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage. That shocks Naruto even more. W what Yami smiles when he sees Naruto's shocked face. And we were all best friends, I even studied Fuinjutsu with them. After a while Naruto starts asking Yami a bunch of questions about his parents, and Yami answers semi-truthfully, editing some of the histories, and outlays some of Minato's deeds just like he did in history books. In order to make himself seem greater. In the end, he got bored and stealthily changed places with one of his shadow clones. After that whole ordeal, one month passes, and Konoha recovers, it's almost non-existent damage that it suffered due to Pain's attack. And so the next meeting of the cage from the five great villages comes about. The five cage come to an agreement to have this Gokage, five cage, meeting in the land of iron. So two weeks later and the meeting is held in an undisclosed building in a half-circular meeting table, with Mifune, the leader of the land of iron as the neutral party in the middle of the half-circular table. The meeting hasn't started yet due to a certain cage not arriving yet. Currently, in the room, there were the Reikage and his bodyguards, the Kazuki Ajgara and his siblings' bodyguards, the Tsuchika Janoki with his child and grandchild as bodyguards, and the last was Meita Rumi with her bodyguards. She is new at the meetings and this is the first one she has ever attended, and actually, the meeting should have started 20 minutes ago, but the Hokage hadn't arrived yet. She still remembers that time, many years ago when she was captured by Yami, she knows that the current Hokage isn't a bad guy. He didn't even treat a prisoner like her bad. Still, she was a little worried about him as he was running a little late. She looked at the other cage, she saw that most of them were annoyed and not worried at all. Though the Kazakage had a calm look on his face. The Tsuchikage saw the look on Mei's eyes and said. Don't worry about the Hokage. He always does this. Coming late is his way of saying that he isn't someone who needs to follow the rules. It's his own little game of power play. The Rakage also snorts an annoyance at this, and that is the moment when the door is opened and Yami in his Hokage uniform comes in. 
He also had his two bodyguards, Yoruchi and Guy, who had a calm smile except for Yami who had a smirk on his face. Yo. Guys, how have you been? Haven't seen you in years and it seems like we have two new members. We seem to all be doing well, don't we? I hope your villages have been advancing as fast as Kanoha has been. As Yami says that, he has a completely serious look on his face as he sits on his own seat between Mei and Gara. Still, everyone in the room can see that Yami is simply flaunting Kanoha's advancements on everyone's faces. The host of this cage meeting, Mifun doesn't say anything against Yami. No one does really, they just clench their teeth in annoyance. What are they going to do anyway, attack him? That would just start a war that they would lose, and in the end, Yami would just carve territories from them. He definitely won't be polite about it either. Okay, now that everyone is here. I, Mifun, use my authority given to me by the five cage to declare this meeting officially started. Declares Mifun and immediately Yami starts the discussion, as his expression goes from playful to absolutely calm. I plan on raising the tariffs of the foreign merchants traveling in the land of fire. Declares Yami, the other cage looks at him with narrowed eyes. They know that he wants something in return for him not doing that. Anoki and A share a split second glance. Coming to an anonymous decision between themselves. Only the daimyo of the land of fire has the power to do something like that. Says A, looking at Yami intently. Yami on the other hand just looks at him with a side glance as he puts his feet on the table. Oh, yeah, I mean that I will ask the daimyo of course. But I am pretty confident that he will agree with me. Everyone in the room looks at Yami with a strange look on their faces. You couldn't be more obvious, you just said that you will ask the daimyo, it's most likely the other way around. The daimyo, who is conveniently your son, asking for your permission to do something. Every one of the other cage and their bodyguards had that train of thoughts. But in the end, Yami smiles as he sees the other cage's expressions. Anyway, if our relationship was to get closer I wouldn't I mean the daimyo wouldn't do something like that. Let's say that we, for example, helped each other hunt down some Akatsuki members, that would for sure bring us all together. Like a very dysfunctional family I take dibs on being the drunk dad. The rakage, contrary to his usual hate towards Yami. He agrees with Yami, not on the last sentence of what he said, but everything else. His brother was recently kidnapped by Sasuke Chiha, which is with the Akatsuki now, so he is definitely willing to work with someone like Yami, to help get his brother back, or in the worst case, at last avenge him. After some discussions, and snubbing at each other that is when suddenly a white Zetsu appears in the middle of the room and yells out loud. Sasuke Chiha is here I wonder where he could be hiding right now. Can you guess? Flush. The rakage immediately takes action and grabs the white Zetsu by his neck. Tell me where Sasuke Chiha is. The white Zetsu smiles at this. How about a gam crack? The rakage immediately breaks the white Zetsu's neck when he sees that the thing is just stalling for time. A turns towards his bodyguards and says. See, Darui, let's go. Boom. He breaks a wall and goes outside, searching for Sasuke. Yami has a smirk on his face during the whole thing. Isn't this nice, it seems like a certain little Achiha trader has come here. Anoki looks at Yami when he says that. You aren't going to look for him then? Yami gives a side glance towards Anoki. Why would I look for him, when he will come to find me? Why would I look for him when he will come to find me by himself? Says Yami, with still a casual look on his face. Anoki borrows his eyes at what Yami says. He doesn't see Sasuke as a threat at all. Did he get overly arrogant while sitting on his throne or something like that? Contemplates Anoki, trying to decipher what Yami is thinking and what he is planning. He knows that whatever Yami has planned, is most likely won't be good for them. But he doesn't say anything, he knows how someone like Yami can be. Yami still has a confident smile on his face as he covered his forehead with his hair by tilting his head down and activated his Byakugan, making veins appear all over his forehead. With a weak Jinjutsu on his forehead just to be safe and no one notices anything, as he just saw Sasuke's jaw crack open as A just karate chopped Sasuke's Susanoo. Yami smirks a little and stops using the Byakugan. He then looks at the other cage who are all silent, in the end, his eyes settle on Anoki's granddaughter, Kuritsuchi. She has short dark hair and black pupilous eyes. Anoki notices Yami seizing up his granddaughter, he frowns at this and addresses Yami about this. Hoi. Hokage, don't look at my granddaughter like that, you know that you are more than twice her age. Your daughter is literally older than her. Yami just shrugs at this and decides to look at Mei, or more specifically, he is looking at her bust for an uncomfortable amount of time, until she blushes and covers her cleavage in embarrassment. Yoruchi was confused about why her father would do something like this. But then it clicked to her. It seems like he is doing this as a form of entertainment, but that is not the case. He already got crucial information from only this small exchange. Like that Tsuchikage caring for his granddaughter very deeply and being protective of her and also made to Rumi portraying a strong front, while she is actually just a little insecure on the inside. As expected of father, he is getting under people's skins and learning highly critical information about the other villages. 
Yami just smiles at them all, but then all of the cage look towards the entrance, as a figure moves as fast as the wind and fwish. Cuts of all of the hidden village banners behind the cage. The cage, none of them were concerned, and every one of them noticed that the rookie Sasuke was low on chakra, after all someone like him doesn't get off scot-free from a fight against Gara and the Rakich. Sasuke then stands upside down in front of the meeting room. His eyes are full of malice as he looks at them. Guy, who is next to Yami, seemed like he wanted to act but was stopped by Yami waving his hand. Sending Guy to fight Sasuke is just overkill, the boy would be crushed to paste by just one of Guy's kicks. But that didn't stop Sasuke as he comes towards Yami with the intent to kill. His sword slashes towards Yami who still has his legs on the table and his hands behind his head, he is completely relaxed and has a small smile on his face. You are not yet ready for this stage Sasuke. Says Yamp sarcastically. Sasuke seems confused for a second until he feels an attack heading for his stomach, he immediately activates his Susanoo in skeleton form in less than half a second. Bam. His Susanoo is hit by a heavy kick and. Crack. Cracks appear all around it, Sasuke looks at his attacker and sees Yoruchi looking at him with a certain familiar coldness that can sometimes be seen in Yami's eyes. Wash. Sasuke flies backwards. Bam. Breaking through the wall and going at the corridor, Yoruchi is about to give chase, but Mei gets up and says. No need sweetie, I will take care of this. Then she goes towards the hallway where Sasuke is, and she covers the hole made by him when he was kicked away by Yoruchi. Yami still has a smile on his face. Interesting isn't it? That Manjekyo has amazing powers, but soon he will go blind. He then looks at Anoki and asks. Who do you think will win? Anoki snorts in annoyance. You really like your games Yami, but do be careful, playing too much is harmful. Hahaha <laughs> laughs Yami out loudly. That is true, but. His expression turned into a ferocious one. When I play, I am always 100% sure of my victory. Anoki shakes his head at this. Then how about a bet? Asks Yami, catching the curiosity of Anoki when he says that. And what would the bet entail? Inquires Anoki. Yami smiles mysteriously at that. Well it will be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But anyway, I bet that Sasuke will somehow escape her. If I win you will have to try to kill Sasuke personally. If you win, I will give you 10 billion Ryo. Deal. Answers Anoki without even missing a beat. He has nothing to lose in this, plus 10 billion Ryo is a giant sum of money. Anoki gives Yami a side glance again, he can't help but think. For him it's mostly pocket change though. He wasn't wrong about that, he knows that even though Yami's wealth is not public knowledge, it is estimated to be close to 1 trillion Ryo. Boom. As Anoki was thinking that, he sees Sasuke breaking through the wall, breathing heavily and some scorch marks along his arms. Damn, guess I lost the bet this pisses me off. He floats form his seat and criticizes Sasuke. You are too arrogant brat. And as he says that he clasps his hands a small shining cube appears between them. The cube then quickly grows in size and surrounds Sasuke as he tries to jump back. Immediately Sasuke is supposedly turned into dust. Boom. Then as if on cue, the rakage comes through a wall and screams. Where is Sasuke Cha? Gar with his siblings and A's bodyguards also come from the hole that the rakage made. But Anoki, while still floating, looks at A and answers nonchalantly. I killed him. The rakage becomes enraged at this. What? You had no right to do that Suchikic. After what he did to B, Sasuke was mine to kill. Maybe you will have another chance. Says a strange voice seemingly out of nowhere. When everyone turns to look where the voice came from, they see a man with an orange swirly mask and Akatsuki cloak. Well hello there my name is Madara Cha. As he says that Sasuke is sucked away in a space swirl. And I would like to tell you about my Eye of the Moon plan. That is when Yami finally gets up and says. So you say that you are Madara Cha? Abito's lone eye looks at Yami, and when he sees that Yami has gotten up. So, Yami and Yuzuka, it seems like you have decided to sit up from your throne when you heard my name. Yami smirks at this. You stupid or something? Obviously not, I was just surprised that someone as weak as you calls himself Madara Jeff Wash. And he moves in a dark flash towards Abito as soon as Abito sees Yami come towards him in a dark flash, he uses Kamui to turn himself intangible. Immediately around Abito dark flashes appear all over. Fwash. Yami then appears next to the cage and poof. Two shadow clones appear next to him, and they immediately also disappear in a dark flash and keep attacking Abito. Yami just coldly looks at Abito and says to the other cage. He is intangible, but if that is so, then he can't keep this up forever. Also, poison won't work, I have already poisoned the air around him. Meaning that this is most likely a space-time technique where he teleports his body somewhere else and leaves behind just a half mirage. But don't worry he too can't attack us at all. Abito immediately looks at Yami with a resolute look. Yami and Yuzuka you are truly dangerous. Figuring out my ability in seconds. But even if you know of it, my ability has no weakness. When Yami hears that he smirks. 
except that you can't keep it active for an extended period of time, and it is most likely a Manjekyo Sharingan ability. Obit frowns at this under his mask. He is dangerous, better get out of here, or he might actually find a way to kill me for real. Though unlikely, Yami and Yuzuka is very familiar with space-time techniques. Anyway, I only came here to announce that I, Madara Echeha, declare that the fourth ninja war has begun. Says Abito slowly from his right eye as suction force is made and his body starts disappearing. Yami's eyes narrow at this. Fwash. And he throws a kunai with his full strength, it easily breaks the sound barrier, and it goes towards the hole in space, where Abito suddenly his Kamui stopped functioning for a split second, and that is when Yami appears in front. His face is in front of Abito's vision, he can see Yami's cold dark eyes. Shit. Is the last thing Abito thinks as he feels his own body starting to be ripped apart. Burst. Abito's body explodes in bloody chunks spreading all over the room. Yami just looks at this with cold eyes as his fist is slightly smoking. It seems like this Madara Echeha is really nothing big. Says Yami, as he looks at the body parts of Abito littering the room. The other cage are shocked at this. Yami on the other hand has a smirk on his face as he thinks. True Kamui has no weakness unless it is another Kamui that is. Disrupting it then is very easy. But suddenly Abito's body starts disappearing. Yami's eyes widen slightly at this. Izanagi so he had another eye that allowed him to use it. Just like he did against Conan. Well, I guess he will get to live for a little bit more. Thinks Yami, not really seeing it as a surprise, he already saw this as a possible outcome. He could go into Kamui dimension and kill Abito there, but decided to keep that as his hidden card for a little more. The cages just look around and Aniki asks. Jinjutsu Yami shakes his head slightly. Not quite, it is Izanagi. A type of Jinjutsu of the Achiha which allows one to temporarily rewrite reality to their advantage, so anything like injury or even death becomes just a Jinjutsu. So this Madara guy is still alive then? Asks the Rakage, his enmity towards Yami is completely not shown. They are ninja, they have control over their feelings, even if Yami did kill his father. He knows that they have a bigger problem in front of them. Yami then turns around and looks at all of the cage and their bodyguard in front of him, even Mifune, the leader of the Land of Iron. Yami's eyes shine red for a split second before he says. Now I suggest that we should create something like the allied shinobi forces. The other cage is not at this. Anoki then suggests. I know that this might come as contradictory because of our negative relationship, but I think that you should be the leader of this alliance Hokage. Yami nods at this with a smirk on his face. But of course, I will humbly accept this position of mine. But on the inside, he couldn't help but think. Koden Atsukami really is something scary isn't it glad that I already killed all of the Achea, so I don't have to worry about it appearing ever again. The alliance was announced all over the elemental nations, the fourth ninja war has begun, and the enemy is the Akatsuki the ninja alliance is 100,000 strong. All of the five great elemental nations grouped together, even some minor hidden villages and samurai joined together. The army was 100% financed by Yami and Yuzuka personally, no one needed to pay anything. Making some people make the joke that Yami is so rich that he must shit gold. There were many meetings with the strategic teams of each village. But as this all was happening, Yami's clone was truly managing the war efforts. While Yami's real body is currently in the blood swamp, where his summons live. Every sage chakra user within the swamp could feel that the whole nature chakra was going like a whirlpool towards Yami, who was just meditating atop a tree. This continues on for hours on end, making some creatures in the swamp wonder how can someone absorb so much nature chakra so fast and at such quantities. Slowly over time, Yami's skin starts turning pale, as if all of the blood in his body is leaving. Immediately Yami opens his eyes and sees that it's evening. He takes a deep breath and gets up, he can feel that his senses are currently all in hyperdrive. He can feel his body's strength though this is only a temporary transformation, Yami knows that currently, even if the whole current world teamed together, they wouldn't be able to beat him. He then sinks his hand on his chest and pulls out the evolution cube, the thing that keeps continuously evolving his body. But it still can't evolve me from anything. Contemplates Yami, this cube pales in comparison to something like the Hijoku, which can evolve something from nothing. But soon I shall reach the heavens and sit down upon that throne. He then makes a hand sign and poof. Thousands of clones appear all around him, they all immediately sit down and go into meditation, and a scene that terrified all of the blood swamp inhabitants happens. They don't feel nature chakra anymore as immediately as it is created within the surroundings, the clones suck it up. Yami smiles at this, all of the parts to his plan are in place. He then uses wind chakra to rip off the clothes that he is wearing, and he is covered by smoke, he is wearing some blue ninja pants with a blue t-shirt, and the hokage cloak on his shoulders, the hokage hat is on his side. He immediately disappears in a dark flash, and he arrives at the top of the Hokage Mountain. He knows that he is unlikely to see this view anymore now. This will be the end, Yami will become a whole new existence after this war. He can't help but think about his family, and this time it wasn't the one in a whole new world but the one in here. 
My children, Kiba, Hana, Nari and Yurichi. I want you to know that I truly care and yes I love you, my children. But I will never be able to see you again. So sorry but I I can't give up my dream for my family again. I am going to be selfish this time. So I will ask forgiveness for you, because I never could be a father to any of you. As he thinks these thoughts, he puts two fingers in his forehead, and immediately four translucent white light balls appear to fly on four different locations. Those were a copy of Yami's memory and feelings in that last moment. He can't help it as a tear rolls down his eyes as he keeps looking at Kanoha down below him. I truly love this world and have enjoyed every second I have lived here. Even as a tear falls down his eye, Yami still has a smile on his face. Yami in the end sighs and suppresses his feelings of melancholy. His eyes harden as he sends his clones knock out his children and take them to safety. He takes a deep breath and disappears in a dark flash. But while Yami was going to join the allied shinobi forces, in a dark cave with only a simmering candle as a source of light. In the darkness was a man leaning against the walls of the cave. He has long dark hair, snake-like eyes with purple eye shadower, and very pale skin. It is Arachimaru, he is alive and healthy. He was killed by Sasuke. But he too learned something from Yami. You must always have at least five countermeasures for any situation, he never predicted that Sasuke would betray him. Well, at least not at that time. But I guess I never knew Sasuke 100%. Well it doesn't matter anymore. Suddenly a swirl appears on the space in front of Orochimaru, he doesn't react at all as Abito comes through it. Well I never expected you to be alive Orochimaru, I for sure thought that you were dead. Orochimaru chuckles at this. Huhuhu true, because that is what a certain man to be thinking. I haven't been out of this cave ever since I was revived. As Orochimaru says that Abito doesn't joke around at all either. He knows that against Yami you can never be too sure. Why did you call me here Orochimaru? I am currently in the middle of a war. I don't exactly have a lot of free time. Says Abito, his lone Sharingan behind his orange mask staring straight at Orochimaru. His late experience with death at Yami's hands has made him smarter and not to arrogantly think himself invincible when intangible. But he knows best that Orochimaru is nowhere near Yami, and that isn't him being careless, he is just simply stating a fact. I am not asking you to trust me. I am just saying that we have a common enemy who is stopping us from reaching our goal. Says Orochimaru, his snake-like eyes get a cold light on them when he says. Yami and Yuzuka has to die, he is too dangerous and I can give you the tools to defeat him. Abito seems intrigued by Orochimaru when he says that. Man what would that be? Orochimaru's face morphs into a creepy smile. When I fought against the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, I summoned the three previous Hokage, but due to a sneak attack I couldn't open them, and the bodies are currently in Kanoha. Abito mentions Orochimaru to keep going, the latter goes through a couple of hand signs, and he then slams his hand on the ground. Poof. And a coffin appears clank. The coffin opens and it reveals someone inside. Abito's eyes widen at this. Arachimaru sees and an arrogant smirk appears on his face, and he then goes through dozens of more hand signs. Poof. Dozens of more coffins appear and they each open up revealing certain people. Arachimaru then looks at Abito and says. How does this seem, I spent the last month gathering these all do you think that this will be enough to deal with Yami? Under Abito's mask, a smile adorns his face. Yes yes, it is while this was happening, Yami on the other hand. Had teleported on the front lines and saw the ninja fighting against tens of thousands of white Zetsu. What seems to be troubling them is Zetsu's ability to copy the look of ninja and even their chakra signatures. He sees that Naruto, Kakashi, and many others are fighting against Zetsu. But even they are having difficulty as the Zetsu disguise as their allies, and none of them can sense anything. Yami on the other hand just looks at this and shakes his head in disappointment. It seems like I should interfere. Veins appear on his forehead immediately he can see everything within 50 kilometers 31 miles, but not only did he see them, but he also in a way can see their feelings. Immediately he notices the Zets as Yami's body is surrounded by dark lightning, and he disappears. Immediately he takes the heads of thousands of Zetsus within seconds. His natural speed amplified with dark lightning armor, pushes his speed to something that is not comprehended by any ninja in this battlefield. Even the rakage couldn't see anything. But that didn't last long as the one minute mark was hit, all of the Zetsus had already died by Yami's hand. He looks at the army and sees their surprised looks he doesn't say anything. Usually, he would try to get some glory for himself to raise his reputation or something like that. But Yami didn't care about such things anymore. What are you looking at, go and prepare for the next battle orders Yami, leaving no room for questioning. They immediately scamper away and Yami teleports next to Naruto in a flash. Naruto I need to talk to you. He puts a hand on Naruto's shoulder and disappears in a dark flash together with him. They are teleported back to Yami's private Hokage tent. Naruto looks around confused by all of this. But Yami has a no-nonsense look on his face. Naruto I need you to get control over the Nine Tails, or else you are pretty much useless in this war. 
Naruto seems confused by this, and he is about to ask Yami a question, but as he looks up he sees two strange pattern Sharingan looking back at him. Yes Yami, I will do it. Don't worry says Naruto, not questioning Yami anymore as he makes a shadow clone one of his, which will help Naruto learn how to take control of the Nine Tails, while the original is away. Just like this tomorrow comes, Yami didn't get a wink of sleep, because first, he doesn't really need to sleep with his immortalized conscience, and second, he has many things to take care of. His natural reserves dropped to below 50% as he was up all night making shadow clones, in order for them to take care of some things. But even though the chakra cost was high, he was able to make tens of thousands of shadow clones, each of them with its own mission. Yami himself was also in his own little super secret mission. A certain mission that only he himself could do, he couldn't leave such delicate things on the hands of his clones. But as he was teleporting around suddenly he feels something strange, he looks around and poof. In a giant poof of smoke, dozens of coffins opened open up. Revealing dozens of strong people, previous Jinchuriki, the four previous cage from different villages, some members of the Akatsuki, and even the previous seven ninja swordsmen were here. Yami looks around him and asks. Well now it seems like I am quite popular with so many people coming to party with me. They were all Ido Tensei of some of the strongest people this world has seen. Yami tries to see if oration worked, but it didn't Yami can't help but contemplate. Someone really smart must be up to this someone was actually able to create a few Injutsu formula to stop my oration. Well now Yami P off. I look at the people around me. And this combination is actually dangerous. Especially since one of them has something like particle release, and that can definitely destroy my body, if I lose my strong body, my strength pretty much plummets. The others just need to restrain me for one second, and I am pretty much done if I don't go all out. There is actually Nagato amongst them too, so he could actually kill my soul with his Rinnegan by using one of the six paths powers. The third Rakage looks at me and says. Why am I don't even let him talk, I don't care about his philosophical talk or shit like that. I don't have the time currently. I just make three hand seals and summon a bunch of clones who do their own hand seals, and cast countless barriers with privacy seals, so no one from the outside can look on the inside. Immediately in half a second my hair falls down, and the countless Sharingan and one Byakugan at the back of my head, covering the Byakugan's blind spot. Immediately three of my Sharingan transform and change form in the Manjekyo, I input huge amounts of chakra in them. I guess it's time I stop playing around and hiding my power. Immediately all of the Ido Tensei stop and look around weirdly, I smile at them. Immediately black tendrils come out of my body and immediately piece all of them. They don't dodge obviously, slowly I smile as I can feel all of their chakra get absorbed by me, as curse marks start spreading all over their bodies. Anyway, it seems like Kotamatsukami doesn't work after death, I did put Nagato under Kotamatsukami before I killed him, but he wasn't under my control when Ido Tensei was used on him. But still it doesn't matter since when I get serious and immediately go full power I can't easily be stopped. I look at them all and look at Nagato. Take their souls now. I take out my tendrils as I absorb their power and chakra. But suddenly I sense bile rise at the back of my throat. Cough. And I cough, I look on the ground and see that I actually coughed blood, I see my body is approaching its limit again, and my my DNA is shutting down, unable to handle the countless Kekei Genkai that I have within myself. I look around me and see kiss him as he dissipates and a dead body falls down. It is the ninja who was used as the sacrifice for his revival. I look at Samahata sitting on the ground and the other seven swords. I bet Orochimaru thought that I had some type of weakness, or something like that. Like having such a huge group of people with different dangerous abilities in one place coming to fight me. Sadly for him, I have no weakness whatsoever, I didn't waste decades trying to perfect myself, just to be taken down by a weak attack that can counter me. Anyway I pull out the red cube from my chest and put it down next to the Samahata. Even the sword who has a little intelligence fell under my Kotamatsukami, and it doesn't resist as the cube absorbers it. I then bring the rest of the seven ninja weapons, and slowly each of them get absorbed. I immediately put the cube back on my chest. Immediately I use the evolution cube to manually devour some of my overflowing chakra and temporarily stop my DNA crash down. My cells will soon change anyway, just lasting two more days is enough, my body can definitely hold on for at least a month. But it doesn't matter, I am already prepared anyway I can only use Kotamatsukami only once more today. I have four Kotamatsukami eyes on my skull. Two Kamui, one Amaterasu, one Tsukiyomi and two Teleportation. I take a deep breath as I see that all of the Ido Tensei start dispelling. Sai, it seems like I was correct, this is a new jutsu created by me when I was studying the first three Ido Tensei Hokage, who are sealed in Kanoha. I have learned a lot of things and how it works. It truly is fascinating and kinda scary actually, it defied the law of nature itself to bring someone dead to life. Death isn't something mysterious to me, I understand what it happens. In this world it is simply a passing of spirit as the body cannot hold it anymore. That is the oversimplified version of it. 
After this, I use my eyes to get out of this no heration zone. During this time too, in another part of the battlefield. Many reanimated ninja were fighting against the Shinobi Alliance's troops. Of course the high-level reanimated ninja were being fought by other high-level ninja. Hanzo the Salamander was one of these, he is slaughtering some Konoha ninja when suddenly he feels the air above him shift slightly, and he immediately jumps back. Boom. A figure crashes down punching the ground and creating a giant crater. Hanzo looks at the figure, and he has a calm look on his face as he says. I see so you are that woman from back then, as the dust clears up, it shows a blonde woman with a giant bust. You are one of the Sanan, Sunade sends you. I must say back then when I gave you those nicknames I never thought they would become such a big thing. But then again, you still all got overshadowed by that other kid. Says Hanzo, at the end Kinda mocking her. Due to his time of death, he never understood what really happened with Yami later on the years. Don't talk as if you are all high and mighty. Everyone got overshadowed by him. Sune didn't take the bait as she just calmly looked at Hanzo as she said that. I never got the chance to ever redeem myself after that fight with you. It seems like this will be the right time for me to defeat you and show you that the Sanan aren't someone who should be knows for only surviving a battle with Hanzo the Salamander. Sunade powerfully kicks of the ground creating a crater behind her as she charges at Hanzo. The latter looks calmly at her, he can't help but wonder about the future world. Then let me ask you something, Sunade sends you. Says Hanzo as he jumps back dodging another one of Sunade's punches. Has war finally stopped, and I have seen some ninja from different villages fighting together. Is this some type of alliance, is this the last war? The war that will end them all? Sunade frowns at this and then simply says. No, wars will always continue, that is human nature. But that still doesn't mean that there is no peace. As Tsunade says that she high kicks the ground with her full power. Boo on the ground shakes and Hanzo loses his footing for a split second. That is all she needed as Hanzo was mid-air she punched towards his head. How? Completely obliterating it. She then gives a side glance behind her and orders. Sealing squad, come and seal Hanzo the salamander. After a couple more hours, Naruto who is currently in an unspecified underground place, it was a white room with no exit out of it, and with a lot of Fuinjutsu writings on the wall. Yami's clone was there meditating, and Naruto was doing the same too. Yami's clone finally opens his eyes and looks at Naruto. You ready? Asks the clone with a calm look on his eyes. Naruto opens his eyes too, and it can be seen that he has entered sage mode. Yes. He answers with a resolute look on his eyes. He was meditating as Yami told him, he needs to get rid of his negative energy, before he can even attempt to try and fight the Nine Tails, or else he will just simply be influenced by the malicious chakra that the Nine Tails releases. Okay then, get ready, I will open the seal for you. Usually we would need to go and get the seal from the Toad Sage, but sadly we can't waste any more time. The Nine Tails power is needed in this war. Says Yami's clone, while on the inside he actually has another thought inside his mind. I know that Jiraiya might have left a message for Naruto, thinking that I wouldn't be able to open the 8 diagram seal without the key. After all, not anyone can open a seal made by the Shinigami but I can. I didn't just study the concept of death as an abstract thing for nothing. As the clone thinks that, he extends his fist towards Naruto, and they both bump fists. Immediately Naruto feels something strange as his conscience is pulled inside his mental space, and he is in front of a cage. He sees the nine-tailed fox looking at him intently and steam coming out of the beast's mouth. But suddenly the nine tails looks behind Naruto and says. So you are here too, the nine tails voice sends chills down Naruto's spine, as he looks at the beast who for some reason, has a strange look on its face, and Naruto could swear that it almost seemed like it was fear. Naruto also turns around to look behind himself, and sees Yami's clone in his jonin uniform standing behind him. The clone is also looking straight at the nine tails eyes, and has no fear in them. I am going to open it now Naruto. After this, I can no longer help you in any way. Naruto nods at this, and the clone then walks forward and floats in front of the giant cage. He rips out the paper holding the seal together, and points his palm towards the seal dark energy extends from his hand, and slowly the cage shakes, and the water down there is turbulent as the cages slowly open. The nine tails and Naruto are all concentrated and ready to fight each other, as Yami's clone fades away from Naruto's mindscape. But still as the clone got out of here, he looked below him, and when he saw the water he couldn't help but contemplate. Is that the nine tails urine or something as soon as he is on the outside world, the clone gets up and puts his hand on Naruto's head, and slowly dark chakra flows through his hand as he does that. On the inside, Naruto looks at the nine tails, neither of them made a move when Yami's clone was here, but as soon as he is gone. The nine tails gathers his chakra and opens its mouth as chakra quickly gathers towards it forming a giant tailed beast bomb, the nine tails compresses the bomb, and aims it toward Naruto. When Naruto sees this he immediately attempts to flee. But he is too slow and just like a blast the tailed beast bomb comes towards Naruto at speeds that he is unable to dodge. Shit, I am gonna die. Thinks Naruto, as he glances at the blast who has almost engulfed him. 
squash. But suddenly a dark wall appears in front of him, no not a dark wall. More like a dark box as it surrounded the tailed beast blast and seals it poof. And then the box disappears in a puff of smoke. Naruto immediately turns back and breaths a sigh of relief. That was most likely Yami helping me. I can't allow the Kaiubi, Nine Tails, to use a tailed beat bomb, or I will be instantly killed. Contemplates Naruto and as he thinks of this he remembers Yami's words enters sage mode, since technically he is standing still. He immediately turns around and does the shadow clone hand sign. Who off? Immediately dozens of shadow clones appear, and they all gather chakra into their hands, and with another clone's support they make a Rasengan, and then put even more chakra into it mixed with narrator chakra. And each clone jumps up with giant Rasengans in each of their hands, slamming it at the nine tails. Boom. But as that happens the nine tails swings its tails wildly, and destroys a huge number of the shadow clones, it gets up, and immediately starts gathering chakra again. Naruto can't move quite fast enough to stop it, but suddenly. Kling. Chains come out of the water and grab the nine tails by its foot toweling it over, and suddenly a yellow flash moves around and bam. The Rasengan is slammed in the Kyuubi's face. Naruto looks at the two figures, and he is surprised to see them. Mom? Dad? On the outside the clone Yami had a small smile on his face. He knew that Minato and Kashina left some of their chakra with Naruto, since Naruto hadn't fought against Nagato, he didn't see his father when he was about to release the nine tails during canon timeline. But this time he hot to see them both when he broke the seal, and Yami's clone simply used this to his advantage. Putting Minato and Kashina well more like shadow clones of them, under a Jinjutsu, and as they explain things to Naruto, they will manipulate him to have an even better opinion of Yami, and that he was instructed by Kashina that he has to be strict to Naruto. When Naruto heard that he remembers all of the times Yami has been harsh on him, and how even when Yami reprimanded him, Yami still protected Naruto. 20 minutes later and Naruto opened his eyes, and he sees Yami's clone face. He can see a slight worried look on the clone's face, and Naruto smiles at him. You are really nice on the inside aren't you Uncle Yami? Immediately the clown's face become annoyed. What are you talking about kid? Anyway did you take some of the Kaiubi's power? Naruto nods at this. Yep Uncle Yami. Don't call me that. Whatever you say Uncle Yami. Yank's clone just grabs Naruto by the shoulder, and both of them teleport away from here. TCH. Little brat. Says Yami's clone with a fond look on his face. So you did meet them Minato, and Kashina Naruto smiles at that brightly as they are teleported on a forest. Yep, they said a lot of good things about you. The clone just looks to the site a little embarrassed and says. Whatever brat. Poof. And so the clone dispels himself. With his last thoughts being. Hook, line and sinker. The plan continues. Naruto can now sense emotions, but we have been able to do the same for decades. So we also have a countermeasure against it and fabricate emotions. The original will be pleased to hear this. In another place Sasuke opens his eyes with fully matured eternal Manjekyo Sharingan in them. As Sasuke opens his eyes he can clearly see around him, even with the bandages blocking his vision, he can still see through them. He looks around and sees that there are multiple white Zetsus around him. He slowly takes off his bandages, and his fully developed eternal Manjekyo Sharingan appears. Fwash. The upper body of his Susanoo appears behind him. Bomb. He crushes all of the Zetsu around him before they can even react. They aren't strong, and many half-decent genin could defeat a Zetsu in a straight-out fight. So Sasuke easily kills them all, even the so-called original is killed easily. Sasuke looks around again and notices that even in the darkness he can see so clearly that he doesn't think that he has ever seen so good in his life. But somehow he was confused he understood something when he fought Yami. He can't do it, he can't even come close to touching the Hokage. He knows that Yami defeated even Tobi, or as he likes to call himself as Madara. But he isn't even sure what he wants anymore. I know that Heisenberg is already dead. Killed and tortured in a mission gone wrong. I can't even say that Yami was in the wrong in doing what he did, what do I even do anymore? Contemplates Sasuke, unsure where he should go and what he should do now. He looks at the cave around him. I better get out of here then. The Susanoo then starts punching the ceiling. Soon he is back into the open and sees that around him is just a forest. He looks around and by the position of the stars, he can tell where he is and what time it is. He immediately decides to go towards Kanoha, but as soon as he starts jumping from tree to tree a man in a red cloak walks past him. Sasuke immediately notices this, and he especially notices the man's hair that is spilling out of his cloak. Itachi. Thinks Sasuke shockingly, completely confused by this turn of events. Yami Piav. I just look at the cave around me and can't help but smile. I just revived Itachi and put him under Kotamatsukami again. This time he will coincidentally run into Sasuke. They will then go and kill Orochimaru, well Itachi will have him release the Ido Tensei, and then he will seal him with his Tetsuka Blade. Anyway, I understand that the Tetsuka Blade and Yamada Mirror are spiritual weapons, but I already have them now. 
Of course, as soon as Itachi finishes his job, I will get back the Tatsuka blade. I just cut off a part of his soul and got rid of its memories and made it pure, and then I fused it with my own. It wasn't that hard really, though sadly as a consequence Itachi won't remember specific moments about his life. Well, that is okay for me, I don't really care about it. I just didn't want to get influenced by his memories, that is the only reason I purified his soul. Arachimaru has really been a nice pawn, he played into my hands. When you know what someone wants, they can be very predictable, especially with my future knowledge. He is very predictable to me, he has been dancing on my palm ever since he left Kanoha. It isn't that he wasn't smart or anything like that, it's just that he didn't know about my hidden cards, he didn't know that Sasuke was already under the influence of Kotamatsukami before he left Kanoha. Then Sasuke got Kotamatsukami used on him before he killed Arachimaru, and he got Kotamatsukami used on him again, as he wanted to fight me during the cage summit. Every time they were only very specific commands, I can after all use Kotamatsukami quite often, and even if I can't. I can just easily change my eyes with some Shisui clones who have their Kotamatsukami charged up. Anyway, now the next phase of the plan begins. Arachimaru will die, and the Ito Tensei will be released that is when the hard part comes. Madara he will be infinitely troublesome, not even Kagaya can be considered as dangerous as him. She just throws power around, but he will learn with every confrontation we will have. It seems like I will have to be extra careful about this, or it could spell trouble for me. Because I must let Madara live long enough till Kagaya is summoned and then I win. A small smile appears on my face as I think of this. Future knowledge really is my biggest blessing in this world. It allows me to make plans that no one can follow or predict. General Piav. On another side of the battlefield, after almost all of the Zetsu were killed, hundreds of Ito Tensei Shinobi, Samurai, and Monks, come back to life fighting against the Allied Shinobi forces. But even with that huge number, the Allied Shinobi forces numbered at 100,000, so they easily took care of the undead troops and sealed them. That is when one of the Ito Tensei stops moving, and his movements become rigid as he just slams his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu Poof. And a coffin appears, and as it opens, a man with long spiky hair comes out. He has two fully developed Sharingan and a calm look on his face. He looks around and then looks at the one who summoned him. It seems like I have been brought back from the dead to fight a new war. Says the man as he looks at the Ito Tensei puppet who summoned him. No he is looking even beyond that, and he is looking straight into Arachimaru's eyes. Which immediately unnerved the latter, it all seemed like he had already seen through him. Arachimaru then talks through the Ito Tensei that he is manually controlling. I must say, I am quite pleased to meet a man like you Madara Che. Madara just snorts in annoyance at this. He already knows what is happening, and Arachimaru is trying to butter him up. So Madara only half listens to him as Arachimaru starts bragging on how Madara is now beyond even his prime, and that the Hashirama cells inside Madara's newly created body will allow him to use wood style. And that is how you are now stronger than even in your prime. Your body is now a combination between you and your rival, Hash, are you done now? Says Madara, not really asking at all. He just informed Arachimaru that he is done listening to him now. Ah. Sorry I get a little excited when talking about my experiments and yo bomb. The giant skeletal arm appears and crushes the Ido Tensei puppet that Arachimaru was talking through. Madara looks at the puppet and says. I am not your experiment little man. I will show you something that you can never reach, a power so out of your understanding that you will worship as a god. Arachimaru smiled at this. Oh, I can't wait haha. <laughs> Madara doesn't say anything as he summons his Susanoo, and he does some hand signs, while his two-faced Susanoo does the same. Suddenly within the battlefield, a shadow descends, and the Shinobi Alliance members who have high morale due to being on the overwhelmingly winning side, suddenly stop and look upwards. Immediately their spirits are crushed w what the hell man is this is this the power of a god? Hahaha <laughs> what the hell man? Am I dreaming or something? Fwash. The clouds make way as the giant meteor comes towards the ground. But as everyone's spirits are full of despair. A dark flash flies up towards the meteor and touches it Fwash. And just like that, it is gone. Everyone looks at him white-eyed, even Arachimaru, but he didn't look for long as Sasuke and Itachi just arrived at his base. The only one who wasn't surprised was Madara. He looked at Yami and had a calm look on his eyes. Yami and Yuzuka it seems like you have grown even more. Contemplates Madara as he looks at Yami, who has crow-like wings on his back and stays in there, mid-air while looking down at Madara. The two of them, both have cam faces as they look upon each other's eyes. Even as they are far away from each other, due to their strong dejutsu, they can see the other perfectly clearly. As Yami and Madara look at each other, the latter has a small smirk on his face. It seems like you are quite strong. I was wrong in thinking that only me and Hashirama had reached that level of power. Yami on the other hand just looked at him calmly. He didn't say anything at all as he just observed Madara. On the other hand, Madara had a different thought. He used Flying Thunder God to teleport the meteor away. His chakra reserves are definitely massive. 
He has definitely grown stronger too strong he grew so strong, during the third ninja Ha was weak when we were observing him. Yami's eyes just coldly look at Madara in the eyes, and then he narrows them. Cage calls out Yami, not leaving any room for discussion as next he says. Retreat. Leave Madara Ichiha to me, I can take care of him. Immediately everyone instinctively nods, even the other cage as they order the other ninja to retreat. You got those weaklings out of here, now you can fight at your full power Yami and Yuzuka. Says Madara, he still has a smirk on his face as he says that. He knows full well how Yami is and how he generally acts. But what he didn't expect is for Yami to just look at him with emotionless eyes, not saying anything. Yami is extremely careful around Madara, he doesn't say anything to him. He doesn't want to give Madara anything to work. When Madara sees this he smiles again as his Sharingan looks at Yami. You want to hide something, don't you? Well it doesn't matter, you can keep your secrets for now. My Sharingan will soon easily see right through them. I see. Answers Yami simply. Fwash. Immediately in a dark flash, he appears in front of Madara. Who doesn't seem surprised by Yami's speed at all as his eyes follow him. Yami then goes for a full power punch, but Madara jumps back and does one hand sign. Fire style? Majestic flame destroyer a gigantic tsunami of fire comes towards Yami, who also only makes one hand sign. Fwash. A giant wave of water goes towards Madara, meeting his fire and covering the whole battlefield in mist. Which would normally obstruct someone's view, neither Yami nor Madara were really bothered about it. Yami even went through some more hand signs. Immediately the battlefield is surrounded with heavy mist filled with Yami's chakra. It makes it difficult for even Madara's Sharingan to see through it. But he isn't necessarily worried either since if Yami gets close to him or uses a jutsu, he will definitely notice him. Slowly around Madara, the Susanoo Ribsage appears around him. His strength is dangerous, one punch and he will immobilize me. So I mustn't get directly punched even once or it's pretty much over. As Madara thinks that bang. He feels a punch connect with his Susanoo from behind him. He immediately goes underground with an earth jutsu, as his Susanoo gets obliterated TCH. With this body, I can't feel the slight movements in the air. I have lost all instincts and such things. I am definitely too weak in this form. Contemplates Madara, as he knows that even though he has a limitless amount of chakra, he doesn't have even 50% of the power he had when he was alive. He has already analyzed the limits of his body, but against Yami, limitless regeneration is useless because he will obliterate the whole body with one punch, and as the body comes back together, Yami can just seal Madara. Madara then gets up above Earth, and he just clasps his hands together. I need to make the battlefield to my advantage. Wood style? Deep forest emergence immediately giant tree roots come from the ground, and just like giant snake tails search around the mist trying to find Yami, who has blended his chakra with the mist. Madara frowns a little as he can't find Yami, in the end he goes through a couple of hand signs again, and takes a deep breath. Wind style? Great breakthrough fwash. Immediately a giant typhoon pushes Yami's mist away. That is when Madara conjures his full body Susanoo, and he looks at Yami who is just there standing up, he was being touched by the wood style roots, but there is no reaction from them, immediately Madara comes to the conclusion that he too must have Hashirama cells, and can use wood style. Yami and Yuzuka, be glad, as I, Madara Ichiha recognize you as the strongest living ninja. And I shall also use my full power against you. Says Madara as his Susanoo grows giant and he then whispers. Settle. Fwash. Immediately the gigantic Susanoo draws his sword and attacks Yami, who still has a calm look on his face. The sword moves at incredible speed as at less than a second the sword is in front of Yami, and he still has a calm look on his face, he clenches his fist, and a dark bird-like gauntlet appears on his hand, and he then punches the Susanoo's sword. Boom. As they clash the ground around them trembles as if a high-level earthquake hit this place. The mountaintops around are all cut off, and the hills are all settled down. Madara looks down at the figure below him, Yami has a frown on his face as he looks at his cut-off arm. The Susanoo's sword cut his arm like tofu with no problem whatsoever. Though Yami's arm had already regenerated and looked brand new, the old arm turned into a black goo-like substance. I can't fight as Susanoo with only my body hat on. Thinks Yami as he notices how this resulted. I guess expecting a punch to win against a sword was obviously not a thought of mine. But I did test out how strong his Susanoo is. In the end, Madara swings the Susanoo's sword toward Yami, intending to cut him in half, but Yami just clasped his hand, and as the sword was about to reach him. Boom! Two giant golden hand clasped together into the sword, immediately stopping the sword on its tracks. And as that happened Yami jumped up and clasped his hands again, this time his body is surrounded by golden chakra, and a giant golden construct of a Buddha with 100 hands appears below him, and he stands on top of its head. The construct is just as big as the perfect Susanoo. 100 type Guanyin Bodhisattva. When Madara sees this he frowns at it, after all, this reminds him of one of Hashirama's finishing moves. 
Immediately that split-second reaction of Madara's, Yami noticed and decided to take advantage of it, as his Guanyin Bodhisattva attacks with palms, punches, and chops towards Madara's Susanu. The latter frowns at this, and his Manjekyo Sharingan starts changing slowly transforming into a Rinnegan. He then points his palms towards Yami Shinra Tensei Buom. As this was happening, on the other side of the battlefield. Abito was fighting Guy, Naruto, Kakashi and Kurenai when they all felt a sudden tremor, and then they looked towards the source of where it came from, immediately their eyes widened as they see a giant mushroom cloud where Yami and Madara were supposed to be fighting. While this happened and everyone looked at the giant cloud mushroom with whitened eyes. But the Kaiubi inside Naruto had another thought process. That chakra it is definitely Madara he is here now. The first seeds of doubt start appearing within the Nine Tails mind. He doesn't know what he should do next, he personally knows how strong Madara is, and he alone can never fight someone like Madara. But what about? His mind begins to wander on different possibilities, he is willing to do almost anything, just so he doesn't have to be under Madara's control anymore. At the same time in the battlefield between Yami and Madara. The latter was in his Susanoo governing above ground as he looked at the giant crater below him. Yami was sprawled in the middle of the giant crater. His face is completely calm and he has no injuries in his body. That was quite strong says Yami calmly, annoying Madara a little due to his disregard for his power. He could see it in Yami's eyes, he wasn't worried at all during this fight. Are you looking down on me? Asks Madara rhetorically, already knowing the answer to his own question. Yami just shrugs while looking at Madara. Was I that obvious? Madara's eyes turn cold again. I see immediately he goes through some hand signs again. Wood style? Wood dragon jutsu boom. Right from below Yami, a giant wooden dragon with its mouth open appears, and it's about to engulf Yami, but he just brings his fist back and bomb. He punches the wood dragon. Crack. Boom. He easily destroys it. His eyes never left Madara even as he did that, he then smiles at Madara. You are quite interesting for an old relic of the past. Madara looks at Yami with a little fury in his eyes. But even though he was angry, they would never affect his actions or act reckless, he is too experienced to have something like anger cloud as judgment. In the end he just clasps his hands together, and when he separates them a black ball appears between his hands, he throws it towards Yami. Who just looks at the ball indifferently. His eyes cold as always. Yami already knows what the ball does, so there is no need to be panicked, scared or anything like that. I should go on the attack too now. Thinks Yami. Fwash. Black wings appear behind him, and he moves so fast that he seems like a dark blur towards Madara. Completely disregarding the dark sphere as it starts getting a suction force and the earth is going around it, starting to form a meteor. But Yami didn't care about it as he was in front of Madara, who is inside his perfect Susanoo. Bam. Yami punches the perfect Susanoo with full power. Crack. The perfect Susanoo cracks, surprising Madara a little. What monster strength he is actually toppling over the perfect Susanoo. Boom. The perfect Susanoo falls due to Yami using his full power against it. But he doesn't stop there as he immediately goes towards the down Susanoo and starts punching. Bam. 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 Countless hits descended upon the Susanoo, but Madara wasn't docile rather as the Chewbacca Tensei had created a giant meteoric structure. The giant meteor comes towards them as Madara was protected by the Susanoo, but Yami had nothing to protect him as he punched, but he wasn't worried about it at all. Fwish. Yami simply disappears in a dark flash as the meteor is about to hit him. He teleports away from the meteor. Boom. He sees the giant meteor crash into Madara. But immediately Yami realizes something Yami P of. Damn he did that on purpose. I actually knew that he couldn't defeat me as he was like that. Currently I can't sense him hmm, so he must be regenerating. Well it doesn't matter anymore, I had my battle with him and saw the difference between us. I was winning against him, he had no way to kill me. True, the Rinnegan does have the abilities to kill me, but he can't kill me, he can't catch me off guard, and he saw that even if we fought for days, in the end he would be the one to slip up and die. If he was truly alive, then we would be more equal, but then I would just use Kamui or Kodamatsukami. Both of which give me the ability to easily kill him. He has no chance to win against me, it seems like I have already surpassed people like Madara and Hashirama. Well, I have surpassed them only because of my Kamui and Kodamatsukami, two abilities that I plan to keep hidden until the right, critical and perfect moment. Well I better get ready for the next stage. Suddenly I feel some blood gather at the back of my throat. Cough. Cough. I caught out some black oil-like blood. Damn soon this body will actually get destroyed from the inside if I keep this shit up. I will actually start to weaken in two days, thankfully I don't even need to wait for that much time. General Piov. 20 minutes later in the Edo Tensei technique is released. Dispelling all of the ninja summoned by it except Madara. This also signified Orochimaru's death. He was killed by Itachi who was controlled by Yami Orochimaru, had no longer anyone to revive into, Yami's clones killed them all, and took care of all of Orochimaru's revival methods, effectively killing him. 
At the same time, Abito's mask was broken off showing his true identity, and that is when Madara appeared and screamed out loudly. Abito do it now. Abito was surprised by what Madara said, by his tone, it pretty much said that he must be revived now, or the plan might actually fail. Immediately Black Zetsu wraps himself around half of Abito's body, and they clasp their hands together. Abito has one of his eyes which allows him to use Kamui, and the other one of his eyes is Madara's Rinnegan, which allows him to use Rin Rebirth immediately steam started coming out of Madara's Ito Tensei body, and slowly his skin started to turn from Ito Tensei pale and clay, like to a healthy color. Ha 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 laughs Madara, shocking the people around him. Which consisted of Guy, Naruto, Kakashi and Kuranai. The latter looked at Madara with eyes filled with rage. She didn't even care that Madara just revived himself. Where is he? Asks Kuranai with a deadly look in her natural red eyes. Madara has a smile on his face as he notices this. Hmm? I ask you where is Yami screams Kuranai, her face full of rage. Madara's smile widens at this. Oh, that guy how can I say this well he is immediately tears appeared on Kuranai's face as she looked at Madara in the eyes. As she uses the Jinjutsu, she immediately rushes towards Madara with a kunai in her hand. Madara just looks at this with a disappointed look on his face, he only has one Rinnegan on his eyes, but his power is somewhere where not even Kuranai can hope to dream of catching up to. Stupid woman. A skeletal arm with a sword appears and stabs towards Kuranai, as Kuranai sees the skeletal arm with the sword about to stab her. She isn't even thinking straight as she rushed Madara, Guy is about to go and stop her, but before he can do so. Yami appears in a dark flash and grabs her in a princess carry. As Kuranai sees this she is overwhelmed by emotions, seeing him all good and fine. But Yami just looks at Kuranai as if looking at a stupid person and says. Baka you are a jonin and a grown woman so don't act like this. Keep your feelings under control. As Yami says that, he then fwash. He throws Kuranai far away, as if he didn't care. But he knew that the battle between him and Madara would continue once more to fight, and Kuranai would have a head start to run away from here. Immediately, Madara used this time to signal Abito, who used Kamui and appeared next to Madara, he then gives him his other Rinnegan. Madara takes it and plucks it into his eyes he then looks at Yami, whose eyes widen as suddenly. Bam. He feels something hit in the head. He frowns at this, he felt nothing at this, but he immediately has a theory of what hit him. Must be a limbo clone. Madara immediately summons the Jido Meizo below him, and he moves in front of Naruto, as Yami is occupied fighting an enemy that he can't see or sense at all. Yami P of. I can't sense anything, literally nothing as I feel a hit towards where a normal human's kidneys would be. With my Byakugan, I can see Madara go towards Naruto as he kicks Kakashi and die away. Immediately he sinks his fingers into Naruto's stomach, pulling out the nine tails out of him. But me, I extends microscopic chakra strings all around my body, three centimeters above my skin. Suddenly I feel something hit the chakra strings. Gotcha immediately my chakra strings go around the invisible limbo clone, and few injutsu markings appear all over it. By the time I had this confrontation with this clone, Madara had already gotten the nine tails and Naruto fell in the ground, also B seems to have gotten killed too. And immediately Madara touches the ten tails with his right hand. Run I yell at Guy and Kakashi. I will hold him back. Sensei. Says Guy, as he lets Kakashi run away with Naruto. I just shake my head. This is an order from your Hokage have some trust on me Guy. Guy has a serious on his face, just like I taught him. Never panic in front of an enemy. He seems unsure of something, but then he turns around and contrary to my expectations, he takes off his Konoha headband and says. I am going against Hokage's orders and am now a missing ninja, so sorry sensei, but I won't be listening to you this time. I am surprised by this, but in the end a smile appears on my face as I look towards Madara, who is still absorbing the ten tails and tell Guy. I really raised a good student immediately a clone appears next to me and hits Guy's neck, knocking him out immediately and picking him up and running away together with Kakashi. As soon as that is done, I rush towards Abito and before he could even move. Squelch. I sink my fingers into his eye socket, pulling out his Kamui. I can't allow Madara to get his one, I then look at Kakashi as he takes Naruto away, and before he even notices. Squelch. I take his eye too, Madara is still absorbing the ten tails, this all happens in a split second, as I use one of my Manjekyo for instant teleportation within my sight. Kakashi seems like he wanted to say something, but I just used Kotamatsukami on him. I then looked at Madara who just finished absorbing the ten tails, head of white hair and pale skin, and he became enveloped by a cloak of chakra that stabilized into physical clothing. A full-bodied black garment with black pants, gloves, and boots. Over which he wore a flowing white robe with six black Magatama markings across his chest, and the familiar pattern of a black Rinnegan and nine black Magatama markings in rows of three on his back. The gray horn-like protrusions grew out of his left temple and overlapped his forehead akin to a protector with an upward curve on the right temple, giving him an overall appearance very similar to that of the Sage of the Six Paths. 
I could perfectly see his appearance and chakra with my Byakugan. Madara looks at me and says. I commend you for your bravery, letting your comrades escape even when you yourself know that you could never hope to defeat me. I don't say anything, let him keep thinking that. But he is kin to right though, I can no longer fight him head on, or I will literally die no matter. Well better enter Kamui, but as I am about to do so. I immediately sense 6 exact hits on my chakra pathways system. Shit it's the limbo clones even more of the Maobai before I could even enter Kamui, I see a hand appear in front of my face and I see black shit. General Piov. Madara uses his truth seeking balls to create a wall and just blast Yami's body out of existence. Madara looks at him and doesn't say anything mocking an already dead enemy is extremely shameful in his eyes. So he looks towards the horizon where Kakashi went. As Yami's clone who was carrying Guy frowns a little and looks at Kakashi and says. The original is dead. Kakashi's eyes widen at this. W what Yami is dead, in another place, Sasuke's corpse was laying on the ground, with no one around him, as his heart was stabbed by his own sword. He died in extremely strange circumstances also since Yami changed the timeline so much. There was no one around him, no Karen, Jugo or Sejedu, he was all alone bleeding to death he had gone to Konoha to release the Hokage previously summoned by Arachimaru, but he only found the fourth Hokage who acted strangely, he was killed by him, and Minato is currently teleporting towards Naruto. But Minato also had a strange look in his eyes, but during this time, in a whole different plane of existence, Naruto wakes up surrounded by a watery surface. He looks around and wonders out loudly. Am I dead? That would be by what you mean by death. Says a deep elderly voice that surprises Naruto turns around and sees an elderly man floating in front of him, he had the Rinnegan he is the sage of six paths. Then Naruto asks who this person is, and the figure reveals himself to be none other than Hagoromo Tsutsuki, the sage of six paths himself. Naruto recognizes the name as he had previously heard it from Jiraiya, and states he is the one who created ninjutsu, Hagoromo corrects him however, by saying he did not create ninjutsu, but Ninchk, stating his creation was to inspire peace, while ninjutsu was made to create war. Following this revelation, Hagoromo begins telling him about his history, including his mother, brother, and how his two sons fought. Hagoromo reveals to Naruto that he is the reincarnation of his younger son Asuril Tsutsuki. He completes his explanation and he was simultaneously speaking with Sasuke too. He gave them both the Sage of Six Paths power both Naruto and Sasuke open their eyes in the real world again. Both alive and stronger than ever. But in the other realm where the Sage of Six Paths was floating. Behind him a strange shadow appears. He is completely covered in darkness, and he walks out at the Six Paths shadow. Seem like the one I sent here just died. Says the strange shadow, its voice cold and unfeeling. The Sage of Six Paths looked at the thing with a cautious look on his face. It would seem so but the a wide smile appears on the shadow. But is he dead though? Asks the shadow Hagiromo, the latter is unsure how to answer as he can hear in the tone of the creature that he is asking a rheoritical question. When he sees that Hagiromo seems to be waiting for his answer the shadow doesn't say anything, and a dark portal opens in front of him. Well, I guess my job is done here the rest is up to him. I am a very busy person. And he just walks in the portal and closes it behind him. As a weird chuckle overtakes the shadow Hagiromo that truly sounds like a strange name when I say it. As the shadow walks away the Sage of Six Paths breaths out a breath of relief. The first time he met the creature was 40 years ago, even he doesn't know what it is. But it is definitely dangerous, also it seems to have brought Yami and Yuzuka here, whatever that means. Anyway now that the creature is gone. I can observe the two chosen ones and allow them to seal Kagaya. Thinks Hagiromo, putting the dark shadow's existence at the back of his mind. Even he himself didn't notice that he dismissed something like that, it was completely strange. A couple minutes before Naruto opened his eyes, Kakashi together with the dead Naruto on his shoulder, and Yami's clone who his guy on his other shoulder arrived at the moment. They arrive at where the rest of the allied shinobi forces are. Madara on the other hand, as he traveled towards Kakashi and the others, he let the ten tails appear on its tree form, and spread its roots when he saw that there were a bunch of shinobi. He will just wait for it to grow to its full capacity, as it absorbs the chakra of the people around him, then he can use the infinite Tsukuyomi. He saw that a lot of people ran forward to protect Naruto and fight him. Yami's clone also ordered them. Fight. Fight him. We need only some time till our plan comes to fruition. When the ninja heard that, they were refueled with new vigor. They went toward Madara to try and fight him, but the giant tree that had grown now to a gigantic one, and it seemed to almost sprout like a flower. Its roots moved and as it touched the ninja and sucked their chakra dry, immediately killing them and sucking their chakra. Thousands of ninja sacrificed themselves before. Boom. Out of nowhere a wind blast appears and destroys all of the roots. Madara looks towards the figure and sees a man, with red vapor-like chakra coming out of him, and with tears coming out of his face. 
Damn it Yami Sensei you always said that one must be calm when fighting an enemy, but I can't stay calm in a situation like this screams guy his voice full of anguish as his body goes past his limits, space around him seems to bend as he moves. Madara immediately recognizes the danger that guy is to him. Pow. Guy kicks the air once and appears in front of Madara and kicks his midsection. Bomb. Immediately Madara's body is separated in two as it is blown away. This bastard his power is dangerous. Thinks Madara as he feels that every one of Guy's movements is deadly. Guy, due to being trained by Yami, he is now way stronger than his original self ever was, so Madara is completely overwhelmed by him. But at the same time, Madara is stronger than he was originally supposed to be too, since he has the 8 tails too, and only half of the 9 tails is missing. So as Guy rained countless hits on Madara, destroying his body countless times. Guy appears to Madara's side pow. 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 Like a countless mirage, Guy's punches hit Madara's body, splattering it around except his head and Madara protect his head, but Madara's body and every piece of his blood connects together. Madara was using his limbo clones to put his parts together quickly, and as Guy is about to hit Madara's now exposed head he screams. Die Madara is squelch. But subtly, out of Guy's back, a dark arm appears, a shadow moves along its body as its hand runs through Guy's body. Instantly killing him, as his body slowly turns to ash damn it Yami sensei damn it, I couldn't even kill your killer. Damn it if only I was stronger. Thinks guy as his mind is slowly surrounded by darkness, and his body is fully turned to ash, and he died Naruto hadn't woken up yet to do anything like save him. During the original timeline, guy only survived because of luck. This time Naruto wasn't there to save him at all, so he simply died. 10 seconds seconds later and Naruto opens his eyes, and as he senses guy's chakra disappearing a tear drops down his face. On the other side Niji looks as Guy's body turns to ash. Guy Sensei Lee was currently unconscious, he had overused the gates before in one of the fights against an Edo Tensei ninja, so he wasn't here to witness Guy's death. Ten Ten was in a whole battlefield and she wasn't anywhere close by. Madara sees this and he doesn't say anything. He just looks at Guy's ashes as they fall to the ground. I apologize to you warrior of the eight gates, but I couldn't give you the death that you deserved. Says Madara, his voice full of respect, he understood how strong the resolve of an 8th gate user has to be in order to open the 8th gate. But in the end, he is a ninja, and playing dirty as a ninja is no big deal to him. So he just looks towards Naruto as he senses something weird from him, but Madara's eyes widen as he senses an attack from behind him. Fwash. A giant purple Susanoo sword attacked him he used his truth-seeking orbs to block it. He sees Sasuke, who now has a Manjekyo Sharingan and a Rinchuringan. Bomb. But as he blocks Sasuke's attack, he senses Naruto again somehow teleport behind him. Boom. That hits Madara in the back, and it pushes him towards the Ten Tails tree. And as his back hits the tree, the Lava Rasen Shuriken cuts him in two, and it even cuts the tree behind him. His lower body all regenerates again in an instant. Madara analyzes the situation immediately coming to a conclusion. Humsim Chakra gathered at the kid's Rinnegan before the blonde kid was teleported. Meaning that Sasuke Chiha has a teleportation ability. He then feels a sword teleport to his abdomen and pierce him. Madara cringes at this. His teleportation seems more like replacement of space, meaning that he can change positions with something. But the blonde hair brat was teleported behind me, it means that scene air can be used as a teleportation replacement. Madara immediately realizes Sasuke's new power just by observing his power twice. Showing his bountiful experience in fighting and suddenly he hears a strange voice on his head. Absorb me Madara looks around and strangely sees no one who said that. He then looks at the tree. Is it the Shinju tree? Does this mean that it's ready to activate the infinite Tsukiyomi? While Madara was thinking this he immediately goes towards the tree, and Naruto and Sasuke try to stop him, but Madara summons his limbo clones, which hold them back for a couple seconds, and that is all that he needed, as he goes and touches the Shinju tree that was toppling over. Wash. Immediately the tree starts to be absorbed into his body during in another place altogether, in a certain place, there is just a puddle of blood. This is the place where Yami died suddenly his blood disappears as if it didn't exist even to begin with. And out of nowhere, Yami and his body being fully okay appears. One of the countless Sharingan on his skull turns blind and closes, and a cold look is on his face. Yami Piav. That Madara he was really smart using his limbo clones like that. I could have entered Kamui, but I would have brought the limbo clones with me too, as I put my body in the Kamui dimension, and that is dangerous as my plans go along. So I let him kill me. Honestly I was outclassed by him so it doesn't matter anyway, also my Kamui must remain a secret till the last moment. No one yet knows that I have Kamui and Kodamatsukami, there is a reason why I haven't been overusing them after all. I immediately connect to a Horatian mark that I have had on Sasuke and Naruto, Welp let's see what is going on in there then. Immediately I can see up to 50 kilometers 30 miles, I can immediately see what Madara, Naruto and Sasuke are doing. I also see what is going on with the Shinju tree. 
I see Madara absorbing the tree and his power rising up again. Welp, it seems like plan 2A it is. Plan A will still continue, and it seems like there will be no need to go to plan B at all. Hmm okay so this is it then. I look up and see the moon start to redden. Madara is casting infinite Tsukiyomi. I immediately close my eyes and surround myself with earth so the Jinjutsu doesn't reach me. I then enter the Kamui dimensions too, as I know that escaping the infinite Tsukiyomi isn't quite easy. 10 seconds later and I come back, I can see with the help of my Byakugan, that Madara has been stabbed on the back by Zetsu. Welp, this is my chance then I disappear in a dark flash I then immediately see Madara facing towards me, Naruto and Sasuke are both looking at Madara's transformation. Welp, time to work then. I make a one-handed hand sign, immediately both Naruto and Sasuke freeze, as countless curse marks spread around their bodies, paralyzing and blinding them. I have had so much time to modify their bodies I obviously did so. I was prepared for a scenario like this, and plan A is still at play here, but it seems like plan G will have to be eliminated. That is the plan where Naruto and Sasuke defeat Kagaya like in the canon timeline. I see that Madara looks back at Zetsu and then at me. You backstabbing bastards. I don't pay attention to a dying dog like him. Instead I go toward Naruto and Sasuke, I use Kotamatsukami on them and stop them from acting up. Then slowly, my smile widens as I touch their heads, I immediately delete every single memory from them. The nine tails inside Naruto wanted to say something about this, but just a Kotamatsukami on it, and it's back to being the docile pet that he should be. I have planned for this for way too long and have thought of every possible scenario. I am as prepared as I can be. After deleting their memories. Squelch. A disgusting sound is made as I sink my fingers in Naruto's and Sasuke's brains. Immediately their bodies melt down into a black puddle, and the liquid flows towards my body. General Piav. As the liquid and now dead Naruto and Sasuke float towards Yami, he just opens his mouth, and the liquid flows in. Immediately his chakra mount skyrocketed, he could feel Naruto's and Sasuke's souls inside his belly, he immediately started destroying them and devouring them both. He then took a deep breath and spit. He spits out an orange ball, and the ball slowly transforms into a giant nine-tailed fox, it was Kurama, who stays completely still. The souls of Naruto and Sasuke got destroyed now. He had already modified the chimera technique, and with his knowledge of souls, he knew how to devour souls. This was the time when Kagaya fully took form, and Madara's half-dead body fell to the ground. Yami now had Sasuke's Rinnegan on the middle of his forehead. He looked at Kagaya and said. Well now good morning Kagaya. She just looked at Yami with tears in her eyes. As her hair extends towards him, Yami just looks at Kagaya and Fwash. He appears behind Kagaya, who in response opens a portal with an ash bone coming toward Yami and all of her hair gathering together to attack him. But he has a smile on his face as the hair and the bone attack passes right through him. Yami reveals his trump card as he easily passes through Kagaya's attacks, and on his palms, there is a sun and moon symbol. He materializes his hands and touches Kagaya, immediately Kagaya looks at Yami in despair, as she knows what will happen next. But contrary to her expectations what is on Yami's face is just a smile. Kagaya's eyes strangely widen, this time not in surprise, but a strange trace of recognition to them. But Yami doesn't let her finish as countless black tendrils come out of his body and stab into Kagaya. Kagaya is someone who uses raw power to fight, so she never understood the way Yami fought, nor could she come up with a way to counter him. She tried to teleport to another dimension, but she couldn't, she tried everything she could, but she couldn't even move anymore. The black Zetsu under her sleeve tried to move, but suddenly another arm has reconstructed at Yami's stomach and caught Zetsu. W what the hell are you? Said Zetsu, but Yami didn't answer at all. He knows how fragile really the situation is, and he might actually mess it all up. He isn't someone that gloats at his enemies or anything like that. So he easily kills the black Zetsu, ripping him apart by using his Kamui. As Yami's hair falls out and countless eyes appear on his skull. Looking around wildly slowly a shadow encompasses Kagaya's body, she can't even say anything as she is easily overwhelmed by Yami. Yami doesn't smile or celebrate this. He doesn't scream in joy or anything. He knows that currently his plan is at its ending phase, Kaju's body is painfully morphed into liquid, and it flows towards Yami as it is absorbed through his skin. Immediately his skin turns white and his hair turns silver, his new Atsutsuki bloodline, easily encompassing the other bloodlines and absorbing them. Yami then immediately activates his evolution cube inside his body, the evolution energy running through him as it evolves his body completely. Slowly but surely his body is coming closer and closer to its perfect form. Two minutes later and Kagaya is defeated Yami just has an empty look in his eyes as he looks at his hands. Tears drop from his eyes one by one it wasn't tears of sadness. It was tears of joy and gratitude as he destroyed Kagaya's souls inside his body. If he said the battle was hard fought that would not be true. It actually went almost exactly to plan, he didn't even have to go to plan B, C, D, E and F, he is glad that it ended like this. 
He doesn't want to have some epic battle, he actually hates fighting. He doesn't want to fighting someone stronger than him he hates doing that too. Yami even hates manipulating people, he only loves absolute power. He doesn't find pleasure uncertainty, not knowing if he will live or die. He hates that ha 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 A small laugh rings through this now empty and silent world. For the first time in countless years, Yami can finally express his emotions without the need to hold them back. The look of pure joy that appeared on his face was mesmerizing and terrifying too. He is grateful he is grateful to himself for staying true to its goals and dreams, and just like he wanted. Fwash. Yami felt something that he has never felt before the range of his current Byakugan is, is the whole surface of the planet. He can feel it he can feel his first step towards omnipresence, he knows that his journey will most likely never be over. He knows that he still has that greed in his heart, and he now wants more, he looks towards the earth and senses something strange. Hmm so there was another Atsutsuki one earth? I didn't know of that thinks Yami and. Next Yami does someone that should be impossible, he uses his teleportation Manjekyo Sharingan, which allows him to teleport to anywhere within his vision. Fwash. Immediately he appears next to a human who is in the middle of the woods, and strangely he isn't under the effects of the infinite Tsukiyomi. The man is a fairly tall and of light complexion. He sports a shaved head, apart from a long mohawk of black hair, tied in a long ponytail style reaching his lower back, pronounced eye ridges void of brows, a broad nose, and large red eyes. He also has a diamond tattoo on his chin, and the Roman numeral C tattooed below his left eye. But Yami immediately knows what is wrong, as he looks through the man's ear, and sees the miniature Atsutsuki he bore the telltale features of the Atsutsuki clan, including pale skin, and a long, curving horn which grew from his left brow and wrapped around the back of his skull before jutting outward from his right temple, resembling a crown. The iris and pupil of his right eye is yellow with a black wheel-like pattern with eight spokes coming out of the center, while his left eye was a Byakugan. Yami moves at unimaginable speeds as he easily kills and destroys the surprisingly strong Atsutsuki. He also absorbs his power altogether after absorbing the now named Asiki Atsutsuki. Yami clenches his fist and is a little surprised by the power boost he got from him. He then takes his memories at its raw form and destroys their emotions connected to the memory, and he starts watching it like a movie. In the end Yami just frowns disappointedly at this. What a dumbass, he got betrayed by Kagaya when they landed on Earth. Well, what a loser all this power and in the end, his arrogant personality was the thing that stopped him from greatness. Well in the end to him it doesn't matter. What matters is that he has now learned where the other Atsutsuki and their clan are. Well now this is interesting to Yami quite interesting indeed he then controls his Byakugan's vision as he fwash. In an instant he is teleported at the end of the Earth's atmosphere and almost reaching into space. His Byakugan now reaches to the moon, and he immediately teleports to where some of the Atsutsuki clan branch members live. Before they could even react, he just absorbed them, and then he immediately puts even more chakra into his evolution cube to optimize his genes. It feels like there is no ending to the growth of the Atsutsuki genes. Contemplates Yami, as he doesn't even feel the DNA collapse or anything like it. Though he currently needs to go into a cooldown and strengthen his soul a little bit more before absorbing some more Atsutsuki. They will make some nice prey for me. Guess I should make my own eye on the moon plan. At the sight of Yami's skull an eye appears, more specifically a Kotamatsukami eye. Them slowly another eye appears, it was a clone of Itachi's eye, and Yami's right eye socket, a Rinchuringan appears. On the moon, the image of the Tsukiyomi and Kotamatsukami are reflected. Madara and Kagaya wanted for a type of eternal peace for the people in their dreams. Yami cares none about that, he used his Tsukiyomi to modify everyone's dream and make it a perfect copy of reality. Even the laws of physics are the same. Next he used the Kotamatsukami to put the idea in people's head that they must create as many new ninjutsu in their lives. Then Yami makes a hand sign and poof. A whole part of the planet is surrounded by smoke as around 1 million shadow clones appear. They immediately go down there to where the people in the infinite Tsukiyomi are being held. They will do daily inspection on them from today till eternity. Also there was another order give his children legitimate and illegitimate ones their own lives and how they would like it to be. Yami their father will always be there for them. This is Yami's last gift to his children in eternity and happiness. This is his heaven for them, as he knows that a real heaven doesn't really exist now. He knows that he can visit them whenever he wants in their lives this is his way of protecting them. For he will never take them with him, he knows how it will end if he does something like that, he will be betrayed by them. Eternity is a very long time Yami P of. I look at the beautiful earth below me as I am currently in space. I see that everyone, or more correctly everything on earth is under my control now. Also the smartest people on the planet will be working for me and developing techniques for eternity for me. Genius is at the level of Arachimaru all around the world working just for me. I wonder what they will be able to come up with. But in this way, just like humanity, I will always continue to evolve. But still I want some more. Well then time to go some Atsutsuki hunting. General Piav. Since that day three years have passed. 
The Atsutsuki were already exterminated by Yami all of them devoured by him. His body, chakra, jutsu and everything else is at the limit. He has gained so many abilities, formed the ability to read fate, see the future, erase time, even enter different dimensions. Ever since he gained the ability to travel to different dimensions, he also has the ability to see where one comes from from one of the countless Atsutsuki that he has devoured. And that is what is confusing him because when he opens a portal Yami can see a string that can teleport him to a certain place which definitely isn't Kanoha. So I can return home now ha thinks Yami, as he has a little conflicted look on his face. But in the end he comes to his decision. What should be done must be done. I can't cower out of it once more. But I still have some things to take care of here. As he thinks that Yami looks at the turtle-like thing in his hand as tendrils start devouring. Time travel has been acquired. Thinks Yami as he then opens a portal in front of him. This is the second dimension or also known as Limbo or the place where Hagoromo, Shinigami, Jashin, etc. should be. Yami has a smirk on his face as he is confident in taking them down too. As soon as he walks through the portal. He sees that he is in a grey world with water below him. Nothing makes sense in here as Yami immediately notices that not even the laws of the world are different. But when he activates his Byakugan, he sees something that absolutely shocks him. What the hell is that thinks Yami, his face full of shock at what he sees in front of him. The Shinigami, Hagiromo and countless other dead beings nailed to another already giant dead being who seems like a fish with countless hands made out of darkness, they are also all dead too. Also that dark being with the hands made out of darkness, is that the being who was attempting to grab me as I was getting reborn here Yami P of. I also see something else written on the body of the dark fish like being with hands of darkness attached to it. The writings say. Catch me if you can and it was written all in English a language who no one in this world should know. My mind immediately connects the dots on who it is. It is the thing who reincarnated me. I have always had a most likely theory for who the being that reincarnated me is, let's see if this is real then. I open a portal back to my original world and I step through it. Immediately I am in outer space, I am already invisible so no satellite or anything like that can see me. I see my beautiful original earth. The countless satellites around it and with my Byakugan, I can see something that brings me a little despair. 43 years have passed in here since my death too. I immediately just teleport towards my apartment where me and my family used to live. When I entered I saw two old men chatting together happily one was a brown eyes dirty blonde haired old man who looked around his 50s. This is someone I am very familiar with, and even if I didn't see him for 40 years I recognize him he is my little brother. Next to him it is another old man, this one seems around his 60s, as his hair is all white from old age, and he too has brown eyes that old man that old man is me, when I see an old version of me I am completely shocked. How is this possible? I died 40 years ago, this shouldn't be possible. I can't understand what is even going on here, what is happening, why it is happening and how it happened. I can see that the me in here is healthy and normal, he has no chakra in his system or anything weird. What is going on here? Am I just a copy of him or something? I can see that he has the same look in his eyes that I have. Suddenly as if lightning hit me I came to a realization oh I think I get it now I immediately teleport away from this place and go into a secluded underground, undiscovered cave. While in there I just open a portal, this portal isn't your average portal, and takes quite a lot of chakra to activate. It looks like a dark black hole. This this is a portal to the past I immediately walk through it, and by the chakra I put into it, I can calculate the date I go back into. This should exactly be the perfect time I just calmly walk through the portal. Immediately I come back to a place where I will never forget. This is that fateful day that I died. I see that the sun is up and it's quite hot outside. The sun is shining, and a black-haired, brown-eyed young man is walking on the side of the road with a calm look on his face. He is wearing a white short-sleeved t-shirt and black jeans, with also black and white sneakers. He has a red and black backpack too. That that is the past me. I don't even need to analyze his facial expressions to know what he is thinking, because I already know. He is planning on how he will go to college and build some connections there, and after that he will screw over the company that he will work with, and make enough money for himself, so he can retire at 30. He then plans to use that money so he and his family can have vacations, they can enjoy the rest of their lives. Pretty good plan, but it obviously has countless flaws that I just couldn't see back then. Anyway, I look around and I can immediately tell the clock. This should be a couple of seconds yet just like I thought. I see a guy in a red sports car drive as the past me is just walking on the sidewalk. This is it this is the moment where past me will die. BRRR. The car roars as she gets close to past me and fwash. It just drives right past him and past me just walks normally, not even paying attention to the car that walked past him. What? How is this possible? I know that I died. Did someone mess with my memories? I know I know I know what happened. My theory was always correct, it's just that I didn't want to admit it. Damn it I make another time portal and travel 30 seconds to the past. I see the red sports car driving again. 
I just extend one chakra string towards the car's tires and poof. Boom. The car rolls, killing the driver and impact as the car rolls towards the past me. The past me can't even dodge as immediately caving in his chest, and past me chokes on his own blood and dies his brown eyes wide open. Humans truly are fragile creatures. Thankfully the whole universe could explode, and I would still be okay, well there is the thing that people could go to the past and kill me when I was weaker, but sadly for them, the hundreds of millions of clones in the Naruto world would notice them as soon as someone entered that world. Well, now I know who reincarnated me at least I reincarnated myself, I grab my past's fragile soul and revive my body, bringing it back to life and awakening it. Also giving it my past self's memories and creating a small normal soul, and keeping the conscience all together. I then travel back to the future where I see the future me talking with my brother and, I still have my past soul with me, and I open a portal to travel back to the Naruto world. As I do so, I just walk through the portal and surround myself in darkness, making me appear as just a dark creature made of shadows. When I go back to that world, I immediately have my Bayakan active and search for a certain unborn baby Yami in Yuzuka, and I set my soul upon him. My soul starts traveling towards the body by following the light, but immediately dark hands appear from the second dimension and try to grab him. They are the creatures who can sense an intruder that appears on this world. Fwash. I cut the hands off and look towards the now live giant fish-like creature with dark-like hands all over its body. It tried to grab my previous self's soul. But I didn't allow it I immediately entered the second dimension and looked at all of the creatures in there. A third eye appears on my head and immediately all of the creatures in here, even Hagiromo easily comes under my control. I literally absorbed all of the Atsutsuki, and those things could enter the second dimension too. Well second dimension is called limbo by them, but whatever I don't care. I am stronger so I can name shit as I like now. What are they gonna even do about it? Nothing because they can't do anything against me. I am not scared of any of them now, I could shit down their throats, and they could do nothing but swallow. Anyway, I will have to stay here and protect the past me against anyone, like a time traveler from the future, the Shinigamas or something like that. He can deal with the mortals and grow at his own pace, while I take care of the godly beings from staring him to shreds immediately. 42 years pass as I just start absorbing the power of all of the beings here in the second dimension. I also nail them to the giant fish-like being and write on it. Catch me if you can a message to my past self, also I leave a minuscule trace of our original world. To help him a little. Well, now here I go. I use all of my abilities to create a crack on the dimension where I am currently. Also surprisingly immediately as I transferred it changed something, the young baby whose soul was being devoured by the past me, it writhed in pain and kicked the mother in the stomach. So Tsum's father saw that and decided to not have a baby yet, so actually Tsum was born a couple of years later than she was supposed to anyway, I now have gained quite a lot of power. I can literally see everything in the Naruto world and know its past ever since its creation, I even know the origin of Chakra. Anyway, this world now has no more benefits for me. Except my clones which manage the people under the infinite Tsukiyomi. Anyway this portal in front of me is a new ability of mine. I can now enter the third dimension. Or more correctly known as the multiverse, I also immediately sent countless clones to travel at the infinite Naruto and get rid of all of the time travel devices, they will continue doing this for eternity since the alternate universes are endless. Thankfully, there is no alternative me running around since I already isolated this Naruto universe, it can't create alternatives at all. So no me coming to kill me or something like that. Anyway, now I can use the third dimension to travel to other anime or media worlds. I immediately enter the portal again I can't tell which world I will travel to, because unlike my own previous world which I had a tie with. I have no connection to any of the worlds. As I step through the portal I am into the outskirts of a universe surrounded with stars and such things. My senses immediately spread all over the universe, and I realize where I am HXH universe that is cool. I immediately try to enter it, but immediately I felt resistance and what? This world is resisting me and stopping me from entering it. I decide to push a little harder and... Boom. That universe is destroyed it used its power to try and resist me ups anyway, I go to an alternate version of this universe of HXH, and this time I don't try to do anything like that and try to actually think of how to enter this universe. I obviously know one way, which is to make my soul pure. It pretty much means that I have to give up all of my power, and then I can confuse this world's natural system into thinking that I was created here. Just like I kinda tricked the Naruto world to put in my previous world soul anyway, it seems like I will have to think of something and analyze this. Better just enter the fourth dimension, that place is where nothing even exists, and at the same time everything exists. It is an imaginary plane created by the thought process of every living beings in the multiverse. I go there and after thinking for a couple of decades I come to a conclusion I just wave my hand and a giant medieval city is created. I just sit there and smile I have figured it out I just rebirth alternate versions of myself into these new worlds. 
I can then copy their powers after they gain enough power to meet me. I will leave them an opening to this place um. What should I call this place? Oh I know I will call it the Citadel. Anyway, I am nowhere near omnipotence and omnipotence, so my journey will have to continue ha <laughs> when I get lonely I will visit my family, I will go to the past or something like that. This is perfect now. I am so happy, I am ecstatic, I can do whatever I want, I can act whatever I want. I can rape, kill and everything that I want. Anyway, I will just have to keep rebirthing alternate versions of me, and then I will have to copy their powers. Also I am now strong so I can let them live in the city so it doesn't get too lonely. I grab the soul of an alternate version of myself and put him under a Jinjutsu, so he sees some strange scary things. I then throw him towards the HXH world hope he isn't reborn as a girl I am new at this, so I don't have the precision to make him be reborn as who I want as. Anyway, now I should get and watch some anime from my world. Go into the future of my world, get the finished one piece and start reading the manga hum, or should I watch the anime hahaha. <laughs> and that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.